Welcome listeners and maybe viewers, if you're watching this on YouTube, to another Arcade Attack podcast. I'm oh, Dylan, yeah. I'll be your host for the evening, and as you can see, it's clearly the evening. Um, I'm here with Adrian. I'm always here, mate. Part of the furniture. <laughs> I don't know where you are on the video thing. He's over there somewhere. Somewhere. It's over there. And we've got Rob. Hello, hello. It's good to be back. Nice. And we've got Keith. Hello. Keith turned up. I made it. <laughs> okay, it was mate. touch and go, wasn't it, Keith? But you made it. It was, yeah. I'm Your here. tummy's I'm all right, here. isn't it, mate? Your tummy's all right. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Enough. Hey, you did it to me. You did it oh, to yeah, me. Oh, yeah, I had to. Stuff, fair, so, you know. That's fair. Revenge. Revenge. <laughs> there we go. It was me who started it, really. Anyway, so, um, so today, this is where we're sort of approaching our two hundredth episode. What is this? One nine eight, one nine nine. Adrian, what is this now? It's going to be yeah. I think one nine nine, possibly madness. Really, it's, just, it's it's pretty mad. So it's about time we spoke about, shall we say, our favourite video game company. We we it's, talk about the Atari Jaguar too much, mate. Come on. We love Atari and Atari Jaguars. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. No, we're not. No, we're not. S for subliminary. E for... <laughs> e for effervescent. G for great. A for adolescent. I don't know. This is, I don't know why I'm going with to a be, Sega. To be as good as that good takes ages, didn't it, mate? You're so good at it. Sega. Nice. nice. I prepared that as well. I prepared that little. Uh, can I just, if people are watching, I'm actually wearing a Sonic T-shirt. So Dylan, you should be ashamed of yourself. And I think Keith's got tails in the background. I've got Sonic and tails. I've even got Shadow. <laughs> oh my god! You I know. Me. I know. They're not mine. They're my son's. But still, <laughs> I did my bit. Yeah, D- Dylan you, and Rob's neutral. So that's fine. Mm-hmm. But Dylan, mate, you're the you're the you're the Only enemy. YouTube today. guys can see I'm wearing a Super Nintendo T-shirt. Sorry. <laughs> It's a very nice t-shirt. It literally, I didn't really plan today. This is just the t-shirt I was wearing today. So, sorry. Sorry. But you anyway, always wear say, gaming t-shirts. Dude, I'm, that's just all I have in my wardrobe now. You know, this is mm. it. The, the work, you don't need work clothes anymore, do you? No, it's true. true. Any work clothes no, it's, I'm all banned t-shirts these days, I think. Just nice. Nice. Rob's even got his leather jacket on. Rob's, it's Rob's fucking dapper. Because Rob's a rock star. The rest of us yeah. are just in our yeah. pyjamas. I am actually wearing pajama bottoms. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to try and cover that up. At least you're close. But luckily, <laughs> the camera is covering it up for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go to a good start. Anyway, so let's talk about Sega, guys. This is going to be a Sega fest. But I think Adrian's got um got a nice review to share with us first, hasn't he? He's it's got almost a nice... like a new, a new feature, isn't it, before we start our podcast. It's about patting ourselves on the back. Because we don't get many of those, let's be honest. So. <laughs> we don't get that. But when we do... I make a big deal out of it, okay? <laughs> and uh, it's another five-star review, so I think it's a, we have to, we, you know, anything yeah. below five stars we never talk about, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> I'm only joking. But this is a five-star, and it starts with an awesome podcasts. So that's a brilliant start. And uh, shall I read it out? Are you ready, guys? Are you on the edge of your seats? Yeah, go on, mate. It says, love this podcast because you get to feel like you're put down the ladder for you in, and let you into their clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a cool clubhouse, don't we? Um <laughs> They clearly love games and I enjoy their banter. At least someone does. <laughs> <laughs> I think their interviews are great. Minus just one. So we like the five stars, but like the like previous um, re- reviews, like the there's one. a slight... Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, he says minus just one. So I'm like, Ooh, oh, oh. When, when I read that, I was like, oh my God, I'm scared. Who... What guest? <laughs> it says here, this guy with my same name <laughs> keeps coming up on the pot on their podcast. And man, did he just go on and on in his interview? <laughs> Was that you, Trip Hawkins, mate? <laughs> Trip, <laughs> come on, mate. Hey, yeah, that's guys. a real common name, Trip Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet lots of trips. What but was the name there. of the reviewer? What was the name of the reviewer? The reviewer is Tempest Fugitive. So oh, that Tempest doesn't, Fugitive. doesn't give too much away, unfortunately. But he, that he, sounds he goes, familiar. It does sound a bit familiar. He goes on, he says, Hey, guy with the same name, people have a life to live. If I ever figure out who, how to get in contact with this guy, I'm going to tell him off and say, Stop making it. So they say our same name on the podcast from time to time. <laughs> like, He's being honest. And he says, beyond that, it's a must listen for me. And I suggest if you love gaming, you give it a try. So that was a, a really recent uh, review. We really appreciate it. And it's actually, if you do a little bit of investigation work, it, we've, I found out who it was. It was uh, Michael Latham. Oh, 
the legendary uh, producer himself, the old, uh, the ex, uh, well, as he's done a lot of jobs for Save, hasn't he, Michael? Well, it's good that he's listening to the show. I think it'd be better, though, if we actually invited him for a chat. What do you reckon? Well, it's a bit late notice, I reckon, but I could try and call him maybe on Skype. What do you reckon? See if he's Let's available. Go. Go. Ring, ring. <laughs> ring, ring. Ring, ring. ring. <laughs> Michael, that... you're there, mate. I, I, I was dying at the Sega when you were trying to come up with what Sega meant, <laughs> which is killing me. I, almost, I, 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 I have these new headphones and I'm like, how to mute, how to mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're oh, not sorry. So, sorry. Oh, Michael. man. Michael Latham, welcome to the podcast. How oh, are you doing, sir? How it's so you? great to be on with all of you, finally. So yeah. it's, a it's a blast. Yeah. Because, yeah, you're a huge part. To, you know, I look forward to always when you guys uh, do an episode. So I'm like, yes, you know. And I have to admit, I, I will listen in to see if I come up on an occasional mention. It's not mandatory in any way. Yeah. But, it, quite a lot, I but it, makes, it makes me laugh when I just accidentally show up in the show. And then <laughs> you always go, well, he's not listening. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> every time. Scary. And I'm like, every time I write you back on social media, I'm like, yes, I'm listening. I Rob. listen to every show. Even even the Atari one, uh, you know, even the Atari ones. I mean, <laughs> it's it's I don't listen to those ones. The Jaguar ones, yeah. It's because of reasons like this that I'm not on social media, so I never get to find this out. I think it yeah. was the, the 32X episode. I think I, I got a few quotes from you, I think, Michael, about the 32X and games you're working on. I, I chipped it in. And um, Rob was like, yeah, whatever. Michael's not even listening. <laughs> then, oh, man, that was the funniest thing. You're like, yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Rob, Rob, Rob is always the one that, like, summons me. Yeah. <laughs> He'll always, yeah. yep, not, not listening. Yeah, yeah, definitely not listening. There he is. There he is. There he <laughs> yeah, is. no, it's, it, it's, so, it's so great because you get a lot of guests that, I may not know their complete background. Um, I know their time at Sega, or I know maybe them just as a person that I got to see once a year at E3 or CES and sit across at a table and you'd be talking about what you'd be working on, but you had no clue kind of what they did in their life. And then it's just kind of funny listening to you guys because, you know, um, I'm older, you know, obviously. <laughs> And so um, we don't um, we don't have the same sort of meetups like this anymore to talk about gaming. Yeah. Um, you know, um, uh, quite a few of the guys from like Eric Wahlberg to Bill Person, a um, uh, bunch of them are still in the business, mm. but a lot of times they can't talk about what they're working on. Um, yeah. So there's a certain veil of secrecy, you know, um, and so it's kind of fun. So it's like I get to go back to exactly what we would be. This talk that you guys are having is the same exact Love talk it. we would be having about 10 o'clock at night at Sega. Yeah. Maybe the monol monolith would be opened um, nice. and yeah. uh, everybody, everybody would sit around and talk about whatever they were playing, um, you know, just what the other companies were doing. You know, there was always a lot of interest. What's what's EA up to? Mm -hmm. What's this company up to? Um, you know, um, you know, uh, rumors about what's coming from SOJ that, you know, you know, or licenses, um, you know, whatever crazy license got pitched. So so it's kind of fun because I'm like back in the day again when I listen to you guys. It's the same exact talk we'd be having, you know, including the Jaguars and the old the systems. And everybody be fighting over, you know, whether the Atari or the Intellivision was the right thing to own when, you, when we <laughs> were kids. You know, so it's cool. It's, it's exactly what my life would look like. We would have, you know, like when when you were like hanging out, just having drinks and stuff after work at Sega, we would have, you know, we'd love to go back in time and yeah. just yeah. be a fly in the wall in the, you know, for some of those chats, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. And yeah, we'd be, we'd be out on the balcony. We had a balcony and that was where Joe Miller's second office was. Um, he'd go out there and smoke. And, and if you needed to talk to Joe, it was the better place than to go into his office, which is always open door. But it, it was just more relaxed out there. And uh, everybody would just kind of drift in and out. And there was always an ongoing social chat because we worked so hard and so long, um, you know, uh, that that was your second family. You know, you were around these guys, especially in like tough shipping windows. We mm -hmm. were there for days and then. 
Um, so, you know, you'd eat together, you'd, you know, and, mm. and, 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 you know, of, and we'd go through phases like we were there when um, South Park first showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and it was on just a VHS tape, the original yeah, one that George yeah. Clooney and, and somehow one of the guys <laughs> got, got hold of it and we went into Joe Miller's office and had a screening. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So, nice. so we were, you know, all. Uh, so when I hear you guys, and plus I spent a lot of time, you know, obviously in England. Um, yeah. You know, so for me, it also is bonding because culturally, I understand a lot of references you make, whether it's around football or anything like that. Nice. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a lot even of American though, listeners yeah, don't. Adrian's <laughs> trying to. Yeah, Adrian's trying to move me to Arsenal. I'm. <laughs> I, I, I'm. I'm Chelsea, but not happy with Chelsea. So I'm, I'm looking. You know, I, I, I was, I cheered for Crystal Palace. Yeah, which is yeah. Funny. It's our local team. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, local team. yeah. Phil, Phil Harvey, who you know was one, the guy who did Net Fighter, and I did Asteroids with him. He was a supporter, so he got me hooked. Nice. But my dad, but but I'm all about Holland and the, yeah. and obviously the U.S. Uh, female soccer team. Our national team is the world's mm. best. They just beat, um, you know, Holland. To nothing mm -hmm. after not playing since March. That's incredible. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah. Yeah. So I was real happy about that. So, so culturally, I, I, there's a part of me that's, you know, very Dutch and English. Um, you know, Latham's uh, English name. No, so, no. you know, so for me, it, it brings me home. So, no. anyway, that's my love for the the podcast and why, it, why I listen. You know, even when it's a <laughs> something I may not know about or mm -hmm. have some direct thoughts about i'm like oh i'm still gonna listen because i want to hear the guys go in <laughs> <laughs> let's see no I, it's very surreal having you know mm. obviously someone as senior and sager as you listening yeah. to the podcast and, and actually liking it so thank you for obviously your your continued I, support I, I, I think you'd be shocked i just i'm vocal about it only because i thought it was funny when you that faint the 32x thing you know oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I couldn't help but kind of step in a little so um, yeah. that you know, normally I, I don't do audio interviews at all. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, I'm just not into it. I, you know, uh, I think most people don't like the sound of their voice, but I'm very bad that Same. way. And, um, it, and and there's like a great story uh, at Sega. I was at a, uh, was that CS still? I think it was CS still uh, before it became E3. And there's a bunch of reviewers and they're all saying, do you know what Michael Latham looks like? And I'm in the elevator with them, standing behind, <laughs> and 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 they're all like, going on. And, and luckily, they all said nice things because I always had a great relationship. I was one of the key contacts for breast people. So, but I'd only do audio. And they, if they asked for a picture, they'd get like a EC character or whatever. So, <laughs> uh, I refused to do that. And so I uh, stepped. Sounds I, like Rob. Uh, That's what Rob <laughs> Rob says. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm with you, Rob. Uh, so yeah. anyway, I, I stepped off the elevator and there still had to go, I think, down a couple of floors or up a couple of floors. And I spun around and when the door was like one inch, I said, it's me, guys. And of course, they knew my voice. <laughs> and they go, what did he look like? What did he look like? Because none of them were paying attention when I walked out of the elevator. So, um, yeah, so. I, I got calls from the next time I did uh, reviews with them. They were so mad that I didn't identify myself. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, but social media, unfortunately, at some point, you know, pictures appear to me. And then, um, you know, now with this documentary that came out of nowhere, my pictures, he pretty much rated all my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was like a five. Was it a five-hour documentary? I haven't, seen, I haven't seen much of it, Mike. I'll be honest, but blimey, that's a big commitment, isn't it? <laughs> it, it, it was utterly shocking. I just yeah. I get contacted. He got access to my Facebook from a, a friend that I did an interview up for Joe Miller, mm. um, and myself. I gave, that was the only other time I did an audio interview, and that was quite a few years ago now. Mm. And um, I did an audio interview and then he did a dedication to Joe Miller at um, a Spain um, retro um, get together. And so I granted him the interview and uh, he's a good guy and we've remained friends and he let this guy in named Oscar and he got full access to really most of my life because wow. now we had access to all my social media. And then 
I guess during the, the pandemic, he just wanted a project and all of a sudden a five hour documentary shows up on me and uh, <laughs> it is the most surreal thing. I, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm in a bad spot because I can't say I like the production values blow my mind. So yeah. I'll just say that I, I don't want to say, oh, it's so good because <laughs> yeah. it sounds so horrible to say it's so good. <laughs> but, but I can tell you it was the most surreal experience of my life because it's like someone did it. Uh, there used to be a game show called It's Your Life where they would yeah. like bring on people and do this thing. And yeah, we that's what it similar. And that's what it was like. And the guy never talked to me once. So he sourced ah, all this material and he got it like 95% right. Mm -hmm. That's mad without even talking to you. Like. Without even talking to me. I mean, I don't know how we got access to some of the information. Wow. Not really Maxina, know. anyway, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> well, or maybe the five percent. Well, uh, let, let's 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 bring that in because Michael, as you know, a few weeks ago we had um, another Sega producer on the show, Maxino, and um, you know it was a it was a two hour interview, no holds barred. He, he gave some good stories, and it wasn't it was a privilege having him on the show, but he did mention that you and uh, Mac didn't always get along. I think he compared your relationship oil, oil and water. So. And, it, you know, I, I didn't like hearing that too much because obviously we get along. I consider you a friend, but obviously everyone's allowed their opinion. Everyone's allowed their view. You've listened to the interview. Um, Mac had a few things to say about you. And I think, you know, I'm not, we're not trying to cause an argument or anything, but I think it's only fair to give you a chance to respond to some of the comments that Mac made. Yeah, um, I, I'm not going to really, you know, respond. Um, I did I, I did have the fun of he immediately after finishing your show two hours later went to a common friend of ours and said, oh, you know, I'm so pleased two people are going to be very unhappy um, at this interview I did. So I reopened because uh, he's blocked on social media. I reopened uh, the channel and sent him a smiley and said, you know, I'm friends with them. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then shut the social media down. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm sure he's been twisting a little about that. That I would respond, and I'm not really going to. Yeah. I think I think to say oil and water. That's fair enough. I mean, uh, I I would say I, I I would disagree with him about this uh, so-called um, HR lack of professionalism. But I'm not. I can't even recall the event. To be fair. So it could have occurred. It could have not occurred. It it doesn't sound like something I remember, but it's very hard to remember everything. Mm. Um, what what I will say is there was a couple characterizations about um, other people, um, uh, and that was disappointing. One of them is no longer here, even to defend themselves, and left behind a family. Yeah. Um, and I just don't think that's a fair consideration. And the other person he spoke about, not fair consideration at all. Not true. Um, that person did a lot, uh, uh, brought a lot of value. And I, I'm i going to avoid speaking to it because I don't want this to become a negative podcast. No, I think, we, we I think try, it's a, yeah. yeah. I think it's a positive space. And I think, you know, he's going to own a lot of things that go beyond about how he's, said his role uh, in certain famous games were, um, he can own that, you know, that's up to him. He's, he's his big boy. I'm a big boy to take the criticism. Mm. I take that fairly. I, anytime you, you, you are in management, um, you know, um, in the future, you'll have Eric Wahlberg on. Mm. Um, there was a time, you know, for Eric and I, um, I think Eric felt that maybe I didn't give him enough value and I let, gave him the space to decide on you know, what he wanted to do with that. And we were able to, you know, come back together and be super close friends. That happens. I mean, Tony Van and I, we worked together so many times and, you know, I was the best man at his wedding. Mm -hmm. And so we had to talk things out sometimes because, you know, there were times I was managing him, you know, here I'm managing my best friend. And, you, you know, where do you draw the line on that stuff? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, Mac was not uh, a friend. Um, he yeah. was a co he was a coworker, and I, I you know like I said I'm gonna let him own everything that he said yeah and um, you know I just wish the person that is no longer here could speak to mm -hmm. uh, and, and and really clear that up yeah. but um, other maybe future guests will 
And if I feel like in, in some future, like I hear the family's upset about it, mm -hmm. then I'll come in and, and I'll talk more about it. But I, I just, you know, I, I, I think uh, Mac did some interesting stuff in his career. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and, and, and that's how yeah. I like to put it. You know, I, I, I'm going to leave it positive for him. And uh, anytime you do an interview, it's always there. And uh, you kind of have to own it. You have to be, you know, careful about how you characterize things. And yeah. and if that's how we wanted to do it, then I respect how we did it. That's and it. I and respect you. Else, yeah. If anyone else yeah. wants and to I, respond, if anyone else from yeah. Sega wants to come and be on the show, then that's yeah. up to them. And we'll I, have I, them all. And I think people let it lie because, like I said, I, I think you guys are a positive space. And, and anytime mm. I'm on here, I want to stay in the positive. Mm. Um, and uh, cool. and and that includes responding to that interview, and and I think it's and I thought it was totally cool of you guys to give him space because um, you know uh, not there are a lot as he, I will say one thing he said that was fair is that um, I'm sure there are a lot of people and a lot of stories that have yet to be told, um, so it was good to have a a different voice out there mm -hmm. that maybe did have as mu many uh, opportunities to tell his stories. Mm. Fair enough. Thank yeah. you, Michael. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. We want to be positive. That's apart from we dis when they dis all. That's when it gets a bit negative. Yeah, oh, yeah. Zool. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, it was, no. like I said, it was it was a little awkward to know that you know um, that we're friends and that he you know I, I I could tell Adrian was uncomfortable and and I thought don't be uncomfortable. It's cool. I'm big boy. You know, um, yeah. it, it was more around the some other people that it was a little disappointing, but that's that's how it goes. Thank we'll you. leave it. Yeah, we'll leave it there. But thank you for obviously your response to that. Yeah, uh, and I enjoy, and I enjoyed it. I mean, Adrian always does a good job. Oh yeah, Adrian's are Who's, like this age. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you? you I felt did. Like you enjoyed. I, mean, it. Yeah. I, I I felt like you directed. As you have in other interviews that I've enjoyed, you really gave them the space to, you know, tell long developed stories. Um, kind of, you know, I thought it just flowed well. I didn't have a problem listening to it considering its length. I, you know, I, I, I was engaged the whole time. Thank you. And then I interviewed Adrian. So Adrian's the best person I've interviewed. Oh, I, I, oh <laughs> by the way, I love that interview. Oh, don't tell Tom Kalinsky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah no i i really did love that interview that was that was probably that that's my favorite on the site oh. aside from when adrian does the reviews with his kid that's oh nice. yeah <laughs> the titan so, adrian show yeah, yeah. takes a little superstar anyway nice yeah. nice but yeah. yeah those 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 are my faves when those roll in but yeah no the uh i i really enjoyed you flipping the tables on and I look forward. I want to see him do it to you. So I look forward. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'm, I have yeah. much to say. I'm going to pick on Keith and Rob as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well. Oh man. I'm going to get popcorn for Rob's. Well, these. Yeah. We'll get these guys. Uh, we'll get these guys at some point. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Rob Rob and I are the kindred spirits, so I'm going to look forward to seeing him be put oh, on the right. spot. Oh yeah, we'll get we'll get Rob on the grill. We'll get him on the grill. <laughs> yeah. Crack Cheers. up Pete. Anyway. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, actually there was something I wanted to ask, since we're doing the whole like kind of Sega roundtable mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Uh, should we, can we start that off? Can I ask a question? <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, I was going to like board? obviously kick it off with like with like a lighthearted one, but what, are you going to go, are you going to go, Adrian? Well, you're the host, <laughs> you decide. All right then, I'll start, I'll start, and then maybe save yours for, for a little bit later. But what, how I wanted to introduce this was, you know, so, Sega, you know, very important, very important company for us. Yeah. I suppose I wanted to go around the table as such, our metaphorical table, um, and just see why it's important. You know, why, why is this company so important for us? So I'll, I'll kick off. So with Sega, um, they were the first real gaming company that I knew. So even, okay, like in the adverts and everything in 1990, when I was you know, starting to get into video games, there was only one console, you know, I wanted that Christmas and that, you know, that, that was the master system. And then they just sort of went from there. And then, you know, then uh, I, I discovered I had more games built in on it. And then Sonic came. Sonic on the Master System came, you know. Don't mention Ghostbusters. Still, I did, you know, I still got, you know, a special place in my heart for Ghostbusters and Adrian 
buying it off me for two quid. I did fair play. I did actually <laughs> sell it to you for two pounds. But he gave it back. He gave I it did. back. Did. That's right. That's right. That's the, that's the kind of guy Adrian is. So, you know, and then it was when, you know, Sonic on the Master System was when I knew that video gaming was for me and I knew I'd still be talking about it years later, 30 years later. So, yeah, here we are. So, Sega, very important for me. You know, it, it gave me my base. Um, it gave me all, you know, m magazines. I mostly bought Sega magazines. So if I wasn't playing Sega games, I was reading about Sega games and Sega news and, you know, all the affiliated companies and, you know, the third party developers that they used to work with Sega. So that for me is why it's important. Um, you know, we'll talk about its demise, so to speak. I know they're still around today, but we'll talk about its demise a little bit later. But that's what's important for me. And I suppose Adrian is next here. Um... Again, I've already told these stories. Do I tell, no, no, come on, you know. Do I tell the cat sitting story again, or, or do I tell the story about buying the Mega Drive? For me, Sega was just cool. Um, I, I'm a Nintendo fan now, truthfully. I've got, you know, N64 was the kind of start for me for the Nintendo love. But before before that, it was all about Sega. It was, like, it was too cool. Um, I remember going, they, I, I think, I can't remember what magazine it was. There was always pictures of Mario having his head chopped off and stuff like that. It was the Sega magazine. I was like, yeah, these guys are cool. You know, they're much cooler than Mario. Sonic's a badass. Um, and, I, you know, just the look and feel of the console, it just it, it, it just seemed like that, a little bit more edgy, a little bit more raw. Um, and it, I think when going, even going to Toys R Us, I remember seeing uh, Super Mario World and Altered Beast. And, like, uh, you know, Super Mario World looked brilliant on the SNES, but Altered Beast, even though it's not a particularly great game, it was like, yeah, fighting, tougher, manly. And I was like, you know, a little boy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but so Sega was brilliant, man. Um, you know, I'd, I'd spend time drawing Sonic. I'd never draw Mario, for example. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I so, yeah. And, and I think just having that, I, I remember getting a Master System quite young after, after I, uh, a Spectrum. And that was always downstairs. And, and like you did, mate, some of the games in the Master System are absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember playing um, Rampart a lot with my brothers and, you know, the old Sonics and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, I never had too much exposure to the NES and even the Super NES too much. So for me, it's always been Sega. Uh, and obviously, later on, they sponsored Arsenal. So that was another thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, thanks, Adrian. So we're going Rob. Uh, yeah, I think I've told this story before on the podcast. But um, obviously, being South Africa, we my kind of... I grew up playing arcade games, but also had like a Famicom at home. We didn't call it a Famicom. It was just like a game system because, you know, because of the uh, the whole kind of cultural like uh, blockade, we couldn't really get the official versions in there. So we would get like a imported Famicoms and like everyone had the same one, but no one could, there was no Nintendo branding for it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of had that and we had kind of arcade games, obviously a massive gulf between the, like the home systems and the arcade. And I think I've told the story before, I was about nine, I think, nine or ten, when, like, I think that had lifted and Sega had their, like, big kind of presentation with, uh, they filmed this whole segment, like, a big local shopping centre with, like, KTV, the big, like, kind of kids TV channel there, to, like, whole kind of filming thing, and they had, like, all these kind of screens set up, and that was when, where I kind of played Sonic the Hedgehog for the first time, I just thought, man, this is mm. really cool. And then I think, kind of moving over to England in 93, like, I think a few months after they had a birthday, like, got a Mega Drive, Sonic 2, and Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition, and oh. man, I was absolutely sold. <laughs> like you guys, I bought the magazines as well, was really kind of into, I think, like, all that kind of thing. It was just fun reading about it and kind of being able to kind of get visions of games before they came out and kind of getting the reviews and just thinking, oh, I really want that one. And I think, you know, I do have to, do have to agree with Adrian to some extent. I think there was kind of... Sega did feel a lot cooler. I think, you know, I've talked about this before. You kind of open up the booklet of Ill Communication by the Beastie Boys. Like, mm. yeah, the Sabotage. Yeah, it's got and like Mega Drive stuff in, isn't it? they got a Mega Drive stuff in there. Mm. You watch Swingers, they're playing, I think, mm. EA Hockey on the Mega Drive there. Mm. Just, I think there's something about it. Just some of those games we've talked about here, like Robocop vs. Terminator, Gun Star Heroes, just the Mortal Kombat with the Blood, just felt a bit edgier and cooler than, than the uh, Nintendo. Plus, Rob, can I chip in there? I, 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 I said to my, um, oh god, it's kind of, I shouldn't say this really, but, well, <laughs> we, we had a guest, didn't we? Kind of lined up for our two hundred. That kind of fell through, right? Is that fair? Yeah. Should we, should we name him? Should we name him? Name, name and shame. shame. Right. Yeah. So I thought, 
Becca, there's a chance we're going to get quite a big guest on for our 200 episode. <laughs> and she was like, oh, who's this then? She just, no, no, no offence, Michael. I say these names. I never heard of this guy, whatever. Yeah. And I said, there's a chance we could get Freddie Prince Jr. on the show. And he, <laughs> apparently his manager was like, oh, this could happen. This would be great. We can talk about Wing Commander. I know he's a big gamer right now. He's doing this stuff. And I was like, Becca, we must watch She's All That for, pre you know, for research methods. <laughs> so I bought the DVD. And in the film She's All That, he does actually say, Freddie Prince Jr., or oh, 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 no, is it, is it uh, Macaulay Culkin's brother? I think he says to him, here at Culkin, hey, Freddie, wherever his name is in this year, I can't remember now, do you want to play Sega with me? And then, then Freddie will say, yeah, I'll play Sega. So that just shows you, if it's cool <laughs> in She's All That world, it's cool in my world, yeah? Why do you always have to bring up She's All That? <laughs> Every time. Every time. Oh. You, you, you know, you know, Freddie Prince, he he competes uh, on Star Wars trivia on the Schmodown. Oh. So he, he's a massive Star Wars fan. Yeah. And he, he I, I think he actually at one point may have held a championship for a little while. Wow. wow. Yeah. So if you look up Schmodown, you, you can see him. Um, there's another actor who's not coming to me who's actually does Star Wars stuff. And um, uh, they they are two actors that compete. So, yeah, you could have hit him up on that because oh, he, he's, he's too busy that. with Schmodowns, Michael. Yeah. Yes. Kind of well, I, I, I haven't I haven't seen him do it actually in quite a long time. But yeah, no, I, I, I but anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in. He's a massive Star Wars like he knows everything. It's crazy. Nice. It's, I, I, you never know. I, I, we're not trying to badmouth him because you never know. It, the it yeah. might happen in the future, and yeah, I, I like, you, you know, if you somehow land him in the future, besides setting him up on the movie, um, you can actually ask him about if you guys, nah. uh, any of you, love Star Wars. Not me, um, my, but my uh, mate, it's yeah. all about she's all that for me. It's just going to be two hours of she's <laughs> all that. Yeah, well, sorry, I, I've heard, I've heard the reason he won't come on is because we'd we'd make him do the monologue, the hack. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, maybe yeah. you might have listened to the episode where we were talking about that and decided against Ooh, it. Could you imagine? Not I wonder if he's actually listened to us as well. <laughs> no, because Michael, you're saying Star Wars, you're not a fan, and you actually mentioned in an interview you didn't particularly get along with George Lucas. Is that is that fair? I don't want to rehash the story, but yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it. I mean, it, the as a kid, I was always more of a Star Trek guy for whatever reason. Uh, I just lean towards that. I think that uh, seeing it on TV and somehow the movie just, I, 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 I didn't catch on to it as much, but I stayed engaged, obviously, to the first three movies. And, you know, I, I, I understood the Indiana, um, the Indy uh, property well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, but I had been kind of forewarned about George Lucas to a degree from friends that worked at LucasArts. So I was kind of prepared, but still not as much prepared for the level of kind of negative interaction that was. But, you know, it was uh, uh, around a property, Young Indy, which, you know, he had a view it was educational. And we were trying to make a game out of it. And I think right there you're starting at a, not a common place. So in fairness to him, you know, I think he, he whoever, when he sold the rights, I don't think he understood what he was buying. But still, it, it's weird to meet someone that famous and you're actually in the you know facility and you're in his private screening room and he's just being just a straight out, just jerk to you. <laughs> and, and you're just like, wow, really? You know, I, yeah. I, I've, I've met all these other celebrities and they've all been nice and accommodating. Mm. And, you know, you know, luckily he wasn't my hero because, you know, you don't want to meet yeah, your heroes. Yeah, yeah. But I met John Hughes and he was my hero. Oh, and, I was going to ask you. Legend, and, yeah. yeah, and he was everything, yeah. everything, everything you wanted, just everything and more. So, so only, my, mine worked out. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe only factual things like crystal skulls are allowed in Indiana Jones. Oh, films. yeah, only crystal skulls do. You know, they <laughs> oh, definitely have man. healing powers. Do you know yeah. what? Like, I, I went on, sorry, I... I thought yeah, I'd tell we, got, we, gotta get, Go we gotta get back to Keith, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget Keith. Keith's I don't still worry waiting. about me, it's fine. Uh, I went <laughs> I, like I derailed you guys, sorry. <laughs> no, just get on to George Lucas, because a few years ago I went on a date with like a sound engineer. She said she uh, one of her like best friends like worked on all like the three prequel Star Wars films with George Lucas. He was like doing like rec some kind of video like or sound kind of thing where he had to inter interact with Lucas a lot. And she so asked, what was that like? She told me these enormous, I, I couldn't say them on air, but 
they were like, if slander is such lifeless things, <laughs> if, if they if they aren't true <laughs> about what it was like to work with him. No, and... well, I, 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 I know it's true. I mean, that, that's <laughs> what I, I, I mean, I, I just, I've had too many friends go through um, that experience, you know, at different levels, by the way, whether they're sound people, music people. Um, yeah, any, any run-ins have not ended too well. Mm. So we're going to get a call from George Lucas's lawyers in the morning. <laughs> but... <laughs> we, we haven't said anything. No, we really. Oh, we I, haven't. I, I, so, oh, yeah. Keith, no. Keith, quickly, start talking. Keith, oh, I, Keith I, I, wants I, to I, say hello. good morning to you, mate. Please. <laughs> what was the question like, again? Yeah. He could care less, I assure you. He's sitting on a giant pile of money. Yeah, he's Just bathing in it. Keith. Oh, are you waiting for me? You are yeah, you're Keith. ready now. There you go. talking about George Lucas. Oh, good. I'm Freddie Prince Jr. Take it, Keith. For me, um, it's a bit like Dylan's story, really. We started off with the Master System. I couldn't tell you why my dad bought the Master System. I guess just we lived Might here. the same advert that I saw, maybe. Yeah, the Nintendo wasn't the thing. Not really. Um, and so we went from the ZX Spectrum to the Master System. Loved that. Um, it felt like only a brief period that we had that and then he went out and bought a Mega Drive. So I'm, I'm thankful to my dad for a lot of this. Um, and then Sonic came along. Um, I think the other thing for me was realising that all these incredible arcade games that I came to love, it's like, oh, OutRun, that's made by Sega. Power Drift is made by Sega. Afterburner was made by Sega. And it was that connection and then it went on and it went on. So uh, Virtual Racing came along, Daytona USA. And th th those arcade experiences were so big for me as well um, that it was always Sega. And so that was why after the Mega Drive, it was the Saturn. And go on, you want to say something? Don't no, you've it. just reminded me of something I wanted to ask Michael about Power Drift, but I'll uh, ask you that uh, in a bit. But yeah, carry on, mate. Sorry. Power sorry. Drift chat. That sounds good. Mm. Um, but yeah, and that was it, really. And it was it, a lot of the same stuff. It w did always seem cooler to us over here. I don't know why. Uh, it probably was just the marketing, yeah. It was the marketing, yeah. and yes, it, 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 we did. it was the marketing, yeah. Yeah, and we just we fell in love with Sonic as a character as well. We were what nine, ten years old, um, the perfect age, um, and the excitement uh, for Sonic Tuesday. You know, I still remember that so clearly. Yeah. Um, I think it was. It was just we were the right age, um, and Nintendo were just that little bit lower down on the radar over here in the UK, and yeah. all those things kind of combined, and yeah. The love for Sega just continued, really. Yeah, I think it was Street Fighter 2 that really made the snares in this country, like having mm -hmm. that bundle yeah, with it. Yeah. And then Starwing, I think after that, well, Star Fox slash Starwing, we called yeah. Starwing. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Starwing over here. Yeah. Um, thanks, Keith. Um, so, Michael, <laughs> um, <laughs> Sega, one of the many companies you work for. Um, yeah. I think Adrian obviously asked you this in the interview, but we'll ask you again. Now, where, where the whole experience of working for Sega and how it set you up for the rest of your career. Now, how, how important was Sega, Sega for oh, you? Fundamentally, the most important job I ever had, um, nearly, wow. a, nearly a decade. I had so many different roles juggling them at once. Mm -hmm. um, that was an opportunity that I doubt I could ever get in any other company again. I mm -hmm. sort of did it at Yahoo to a degree in managing a bunch, but I, I had people that could competently run. There were um, their stuff and I could um, manage in a sense for the first time where at Sega I was so hands-on with everything mm. which you know Clyde was not happy about um, <laughs> but you know getting it at Anziata not to make video games or me not to make games um, or for me to get you know two or three jobs at the same time is just not something that um, you know was going to be held back and mm. that sort of rebel attitude also came from us i mean we were all young 20s um ready to change the paradigm electronic arts had attitude um yeah. you know uh activision once it moved to la kind of started to develop attitude <laughs> it, was, it was you know uh because it was a much more corporate company when i was there you know, it, it, they want, they changed the name to Mediagenic, for God's sakes. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and we we're doing product, the productivity stuff at the same time. So it was hardly a rebel place. But um, that attitude um, was very, very special. And I had 
the most amazing team. I mean, the Omega Group, um, working with the test group that, you know, at one point was moving at 24 hours a day, the QA guys uh-huh. just day and night doing, you know, burns of games, um, interfacing with some of the best developers, um, mm-hmm. you know, people just rolling through there at random. Oh, there's Michael Jackson, and you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> and have those experiences or go- going to get sold on a license. Like I unfortunately got sold the Cool World license, which <laughs> after and got to sit in the theater and see that film and go, oh my God, we got to cancel this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But you know, you get you get to go meet you know for a quick thing, passenger and and Brad Pittson in front of you, nice. you know, or yeah. those sort of things, or like John Hughes and you know for oh, Home Alone, and um, so you uh, you can't replicate that. I mean, you know, we I, I had some of it at Yahoo because we had celebs come into there because it was so early, and we did celebrity things, and you know, um, but. Uh, it, it wasn't the same. It was a, a corporate environment. This, 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 this was like a clubhouse. Uh, it kind of in my review, when mm-hmm. I say a clubhouse, I mean mm-hmm. this was the ultimate clubhouse. Nice. And then we were we were making games for what people loved. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, if th- there's a famous video of us at E3, we're all in black suits and dark sunglasses, um, managing. <laughs> the I mean, you know, we just had pure attitude. Badass. Yeah. And you got away with it. I think that's the main thing, isn't it? I mean, you can go, you can, you can, you can wear sunglasses indoors, but not everyone gets away with it. Yeah, if you're from yeah, Sega, no, yeah, if you're from I, Sega, I, I, you probably get away with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think most places. I know that EA um, would have a Friday bash where I think it was like beer and I think some scotch or whatever. But I mean, we had a full-on hidden bar. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. um, in in the Omega Group. I mean, just within our own group. Um, you know, any other company, HR would have had a heart attack, um, <laughs> but they trusted us and, and we were smart enough and, and made sure if anybody was ever going to partake, they were going to be there for hours or they were staying overnight. I mean, you know, we weren't dumb either and we were real professional. We cared about the games. I mean, mm. that, I, that I can assure you. And, and I saw the test group just go to the wall to make sure that certain bugs got fixed or certain quality issues got fixed. And and all those guys got moved up. You know, a lot of the guys like, you know, future guests for you, Eric Wahlberg, mm-hmm. he started out, he came, he came, worked at a grocery store, came into test. I saw the talent immediately, fostered him sort of to get, you know, into the funnel to join nice. development. And you know, he turned out to be like my right hand guy on Eternal Champions and so many other projects, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so you you know, that's that's also something that's amazing about Sega is so many people grew up through the system, you mm-hmm. know, just had a full career and still have careers. So they're still yeah. in games. There is, I mean, because you, you mentioned in your interview with us, Console Wars, um, yeah. the Blake Harris book. Mm-hmm. Uh, Keith actually got it me for my birthday a few years ago, and it's a great read. Actually, it's just um, obviously you kind of tries to tell it like a story as opposed to just relaying everyone's interviews, and you really do get that kind of family vibe yeah. from yeah. Sega like, he, in he, through the book. Uh, yeah, he did the sort of management and marketing side, product development. We're only mentioned, I think, only Ed and I like make a small appearance mm. in the book. Yeah, um, and that's totally fair. I think the story is about sonic and um about sega versus nintendo as far as how they were being sold into the channel and and who was going to dominate and who was going to win you know like there was a time i can't remember unfortunately but we were among the coolest brands of like coca-cola nike and c you know was like you were somewhere in that mix and 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 so the marketing people and the management people deserve all Blake Harris has put in that book. I mean, Ken Hor- mm. uh, Horowitz has at Sega 16 wrote a book about uh, PD. There's a, a really good older read called The Last Quarter mm. uh, by my friend Steve Kent that really, uh, that one focuses on all of that. It like mm. covers the Blake Harris book and the Sega 16 book. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's like a vast overview of the, of the. I need to read the other ones, especially the Steve Kent one, because we've had him. Yeah, we've had this, him on the site as well. We have, haven't um, we? Actually, yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. he's a he's a mate of our friend oh. Jordan, who's 
I'm, of I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of his, uh, you know. Yeah, great writer. He, he got, yeah, he, he went into writing actual uh, fictional works. Um, mm. I, I was sad when he left the industry in a sense, but um, I'm happy my time overlapped with his time mm -hmm. because I really felt this was a guy, like, I'm very happy with that, that book. Like, you know, how, how he characterized anything I said was spot on, he, you know. Um, and, um, it, it, you know, warts and all in a sense. He like covered things, you know, he was the first one really to, uh, uh, you know, mine the SOA, SOJ not getting mm -hmm. along. You know, yeah. he was yeah. the first guy that really put that written down in a way that made mm -hmm. sense and explained how that happened and why that happened. That is a well, shame, really. Go on, yeah, up. sorry, I was going to say, leading on from that, what I wanted to ask you earlier was because we kind of related to console wars, I suppose, bringing that into the mainstream between the book and the film. And, yeah. you know, we were kind of talking about the whole Nintendo Sega rivalry earlier with obviously you could kind of feel that manifesting in terms of people sending in the like hand drawn pictures of Sonic chainsawing Mario. I just wanted to ask, like, did you feel that kind of rivalry at the time? Was it like that competition with Nintendo, or were you just kind of too busy doing the, your own thing and, you know, to really kind of care about what Nintendo and to an even lesser extent Amiga were doing? Um, yeah, we, you know, there was a mix of uh, jealousy in a sense because each console could do different things. So when they did Mode Seven. And mm -hmm. we didn't have a response to that. And then Glass I got processing, though, Michael. Come on, yes, Glass processing. <laughs> which that. I, which, which I, which I co-created, by the way. <laughs> um, but quite accidentally, that was France Tantiato. Um, and uh, she asked me, you know, and I said, it, 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 well, we have this burst mode and it can be used in this technical way. And she said, oh, burst, that's a horrible term. How about blast? And next thing I know, there's a commercial and Joe Miller needs to speak with me. Um, so he was never happy about that, nor was uh, Tom. But, but, but. I, so I was, that was my only time I was pulled into the rivalry was mm. the Super Nintendo guys were like, okay, what's up with this blast processing thing, you know? <laughs> um, and, and so um, that's the only time I felt like there was any little um, thing between. Um, of course, we would get disappointed if they got an exclusive. Yeah. Um, we didn't get that exclusive. And we felt a lot of pressure to compete at that level. I mean, I remember the first time Donkey Kong appeared. Oh, uh, yes. yeah, snares mm. on the snares. You oh, know, it right? Yeah. It looked right. To be fair, yeah, wow, yeah. Mm. yeah, and and you're looking at that and you're going, oh man, this is this is a whole different skill set, um, you know, and 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 so we're out having to compete get developers that have those skills, and meanwhile they take a look at experts. Oof. Uh, but it was, it, but it was employing that sort of look, um, and then try and, and try and use that to compete against Donkey Kong. I'm like, no. oh no, 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 no. <laughs> um, uh, but um, uh, and that's how that ended up a giant mess. But yeah, so there was that tension. But we had we had respect for them as people who develop games. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you look at anything that came from their top design people, we would just worship it you know and go wow this is just awesome game design i mean just mm -hmm. you know we'd, we'd learn as much and i think they learned from us some things too because they they i think they were afraid to embrace because of their leadership a, a little bit of attitude and later in the game i think they realized oh yeah we're gonna have to we're gonna have to eventually engage this growing adult audience mm -hmm. that is aging out and and keep them engaged and so i think they they learned from us and certainly when a lot of the sega people left and helped create sony's you know first effort they had our all our playbooks so mm -hmm. uh, you know they could just devastate us because they knew exactly what we were going to do where <laughs> we were going to um and what our weaknesses were mm -hmm. you know so it actually, it was the Sony one was the harder one because here's yeah. all these people you work with and you love, and you're still going to work with and love in the future, but yeah. they're going to just they're going to crush you, and you know they're yeah. going to crush you. You can see it coming. Yeah, I think yeah when the PlayStation came along, yeah, I think that yeah. was 
It was hard. Just was hard. a really quick question on that. If you could choose any game from like the SNES that you wish was made for the Mega Drive, any game you thought, wow, this would have helped the brand hugely, which game would you choose, Michael? Oh, boy. You know, I'd almost go with Donkey Kong just because I, I remember computer-generated, shiny, photorealistic. It was sort of immortal, but it was like going to change the way that people, it was the next level of um, reality engagement. You weren't abstracted with the, the little cute Mario and cubes, and these are clearly mm-hmm. low-res graphics. This is the first time that a cartoon is, you're, you're in control of an actual cartoon. Mm-hmm. And I felt like the Genesis, we never got there, in a sense. We, mm-hmm. we, yeah. We, you know, we never had that living cartoon. We just no. couldn't push the hardware to deliver that look. And I was always Earthworm jumping. Jim, possibly. Well, that's on both, isn't it? To be fair, yeah, Earth, yeah, suppose, but it was yeah, still yeah. A, it was a, it was more of a hand cell. Uh, and by the way, I'm an Earth, uh, Earthworm Jim was my pick for who to have a drink with. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm, I'm I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's maybe arguably one of the best top five games, top three games for the system as far as just pure, you know, how much blood, sweat, and tears went into that. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, that's 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 what I would pick. I think there's a lot of others that I could pick from my own personal gaming engagement. But mm. I'm talking about what our what our fans would have liked. Yeah, and I feel like Mode Seven stuff. Yeah, it, it, we got jealous of it initially, but then it wasn't an issue because a lot of the games just used it as a trick as a mm-hmm. right. look what we can do yeah there was only a couple of games that really made it engaging so i never had jealousy for that mm-hmm. you know it's interesting you kind of talk about what the fans would have wanted because we kind of go on from the mega drive like a lot of i think if you were kind of around at the time it felt like the big selling point for the mega cd was full motion video and the big selling point for the Saturn was the 3D get like Virtua type kind of adaptations of the arcade games. Obviously, neither of which are kind of going to that whole controlling living cartoon thing you were talking about. Did you do you feel like maybe that was a missed opportunity for like the kind of post Mega Drive consoles? Absolutely. That's why I wanted to do even Ratchet and Bolt for the 32X mm. was we were going to try and give a rendered look um, to yeah. the the world. It was a shiny like Sony built the world, you know, cheaply out of cheap plastic uh, Sony parts, but still it was <laughs> supposed to have that engagement. And mm. yeah, no, we, uh, for whatever reason, the full motion video and part of that was Joe Miller was really into full motion. Mm. I mean, he really believed in it. He really, as much as I was into this idea of trying to get uh, open immersive worlds uh, and, and, and cartoon level realism and then to photo realism that all that engagement joe was just like i want to control movies and yeah, yeah. and so he really enabled um uh, rocket science and other people to 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 get a lot of um, um love uh you know to to show the you know uh what the sega cd could do and mm-hmm. i was always you know uh kind of hard on him uh, uh you know uh on joe i i was I, I would push back a lot on it frankly but i was also pushing back because we were uh, sometimes testing these full motion games and you know the the feedback from the testers you know that was really important because that was telling you what the consumer was going to think and there was not a lot of love you know mm. uh, coming a lot of them um they're, they're good to look back on now i mean they're yeah. re- they, make, they make really good research you know um subjects actually the <laughs> games. well I, I i find it interesting that no one has truly returned to it yeah. um in a sense, there's been some. There's there's been um, like uh, a couple interactive. Like, I think even Netflix has something yeah, that yeah. you can walk through. Oh, Bandersnatch. But, Bandersnatch. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it's because current gen graphics are almost they're almost 
indistinguishable from from real life now i was playing i was playing detroit become human the other day and there yeah. is a bit where um one of the protagonists is sort of holding like a little girl's hand and she's standing in front of a, a house and it's tipping it down with rain you cannot tell that that is that is done by by computer but like, you just yeah. can't it, yeah it, no. that's, that's what it is you know that's, no, that's there's, where we there's an amazing shot of the city in cyberpunk um mm-hmm. that yeah. you know and i go oh my god i mean you can i i couldn't fly a drone in a proper U.S. city or international city, except for maybe Singapore, um, <laughs> would be the one place on the planet that, would, <laughs> you know, that could rival, that would look so like Blade Runner, um, mm. that cyberpunk pulled off. And yeah, see, that 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 sort of stuff, that's where I wanted to go. To me, that was far more exciting was to, mm. to, to create, you know. Actually uh, living it rather than just watching yeah, it. Yeah, well, look at, look at what the No Man's Sky guys have done. I mean, they had a I've game. I heard. I need to get it back off Keith. I gave it to Keith. I was <laughs> yeah. so keyed off with it when oh, I first you need, got it. You, you need to see it. It's amazing. I yeah. mean, I, I all the credit to them, man. They just, you know, took it to the chin. Uh, everybody hated on them, yeah. and they've been and they've been working on this thing. I, I can't even remember. Is it four or five years still going? Yeah, it's been a long time. It's been and out. and and they have literally built the game that they promised, um, and, and more. Um, right, Keith, and, give it back. <laughs> and, I've got to and, get it back off my cousin first. Get off your cousin. But anyway, it's it's. I, I'm saying there's an example of like it's it's just uh, not to be a realistic world, mm-hmm. but to be this you know procedural generated world that's so mind blowing. And I I was thinking about those things. You know, like when the Chaos New Mexico 32x game. That was exactly what I wanted to do. Some sort of procedural mm-hmm. cause and effect world. You know, um, yeah. all these ideas. So. Those are the exciting ones that I wish we could have got. And they've to do. come to well, they've taken a they, few they, years. They have. Now, but Sega, they've come to yeah, the, yeah. I'm saying, you know, I wish they were under the Sega brand. Oh god, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, the Sega brand, yeah. yeah. I mean, Sega do publish games here, there at the moment. Yep. But again, they, we'll get we'll get into they that. They do, later. they do, and they yeah. have some very good. They they they're independent kind of standalone developers some of them are real solid i'm not going to say anything bad about them mm-hmm. but but there's no cohesiveness there as far as uh, as far as i can tell from an outsider of what does a sega product mean nowadays mm-hmm. except for sonic that's that's ah, good means. glad you mentioned him again so my next question <laughs> is sort of centered around um little blue hedgehog but i'm gonna ask a quick question to everyone and then we'll get on to him um your favorite sega console so Mine's a Mega Drive, easy pick. Um, it was the second second um, second Sega console I got, and it's just you know I still play still play now. I bought the Mega SG just so I could play it in HD. It's just you know it's that's 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 where I am. So Adrian, uh, I have to agree with you. The Mega Drive as well. Uh, Mega Drive, yeah. So many good games <laughs> there. Yeah, Keith. <clears throat> It's very, very close. Say something. I want you to say something different. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very close, but I'd go with the Saturn. Just yes. just ahead of the Mega Drive. Just ahead of the Mega Drive. Good. It's Good. like a loyalty thing as well. You know, it, I, I was surrounded by PlayStations yeah. when we got the Saturn. <laughs> and, you know, as wonky as it looked, being able to play Daytona at home mm-hmm. and play Sega Rally at home and, and all that, you know, for me, I loved it. Yeah, I loved good. it. Good. Yeah. So it's going to lead so up to very, my next ju- question. very, very close, but just ahead. I, I, I'm going to. I'm just going to say mine, just so you know. Oh, yeah, go I, Michael, yeah. Mine was the um, Sega CD variant that was the portable one. Yeah. The, no- so, was it the Nomad. What was yes. It? Oh, the Nomad yeah. was portable uh, Baker Drive. Wasn't no, it? not the, uh, not that one. This one was a CD player that had a Genesis built in. I've, yeah, I've seen it. It's oh, a weird yeah. shape, isn't it? Kind yeah. Of, yeah. It, it, it's like a little box with a round end where the yeah, CD yeah, yeah. Is in. and it had a full-on uh, cart built into it. So it was a standalone Mega Drive and Sega CD combined, and oh. it was portable, and it could play uh, music on battery. So you could listen on. So you could listen on the plane. Um, and um, yeah, Keith's looking it up because I the name is uh, <laughs> Keith's the research guy. Yeah, but, but so, why, did you play thirty two X games? That's the question. I did. I, I did because I had That's to. The Wonder uh, Mega, Multi Mega, Multi Mega. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Cool. I still I still have two of those. 
and uh, and, and oh, I'll lend us one. <laughs> <laughs> well, one's on its last life, or I won't. okay, no, no, no. Uh, okay, but no. Uh, uh, I used we used to love that thing though because when we traveled, we brought Eternal Champions CD edition, and we played you know each other at that. We yeah. uh, you know, um, and yeah, no, I loved the 32x. I, I it crushed me when my three games got you know. I I thought we could have done something with it, at least for the people that bought it. And I, I was happy we at least delivered Star Wars for them. That nice. Sega, Sega LA delivered Star Wars. I felt like if anything, you know, we did at least, you know, our job in one game that was something different. Mm -hmm. So what happened to the multi-mega? Why was that never brought forward? Um, it, it was brought forward. It was just overpriced, I think, and over expensive mm -hmm. at the time. It was costly, as I remember. I can't remember the price point, but it was expensive. So it was more the only expensive than the two things put together, then was yeah, it probably totally was. was. So, mm. But but it would blow people away because I'd be on a plane with it, listening to audio, and they'd go, <laughs> "Is that a Sega cartridge?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, you know, if we if if we had power and a, a little screen, we could game right now." Um, yeah. yeah. So it was it was awesome. It, it, so. I just thought I'd throw that in. Most people don't know about that. Uh, yeah. Nice curveball. We like that. I, I think the only people that had them were a few, a few like real early adopters, and all of us that got them for free. Well, I did a poll, Dylan. I don't know if you want to get into that. Now we just wait to the end. Something I'll do the poll then. Then I'll shall we? Then we'll talk about Sonic. Yeah, go on. So I, I tweeted out um, not that long ago, actually, about a couple of hours ago. I said, "Favorite Sega console and why." We may be using this in a future podcast. We are using it. Who would have thought it? And we got 242 votes. Wow. That and many people by the way. I put, <laughs> down the Mar <laughs> I put down the Master and the Mega Drive slash Genesis, the Saturn and the Dreamcast. Do you guys want to guess the, 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 in that order? Let's see who gets it right. Who hasn't Good spoken now. for a while? Rob. Rob, have a guess. Top, uh, so fourth to first. Um, fourth to first. Master and Dreamcast, Saturn, Mega Drive. Oh. oh close. Keith, what do you reckon? Um, I would go Master System, Saturn, Dreamcast, Mega Drive. Interesting. Dilsey? I've seen the results. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, do you want to have a guess in our lovely Twitter followers? Uh, no, I'm not even going to venture to take a guess. Uh, my guess is, my, uh, I'll say this, my guess is Mega Drive is number one. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll reveal the result. Everyone's on Tenderhook, so in, with 7% of the votes, it's the Master System. Boo, I like the Master System. In... <laughs> Good, good for them. Uh, I mean, I, I can understand because if you talk about depth the library and, you know, a lot of uh, people's early, you know, video game memories, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Mm. But, but my guess is also a lot of uh, older players there. Are answering. <laughs> right, yeah. Yes. Because it's, it's because it's retro related. That's that's who you're pulling in. Yeah. 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 Third place, Saturn. Sorry, Keith. Oh, that's Keith. Seventy percent. I think that was Keith always different Twitter. Yeah, yeah, I just kept kept voting. Yeah. In. And in in second place, it's relatively close, not really, really. But in second place, Dreamcast with twenty five percent. So it leaves the Mega Drive slash Genesis with fifty one percent of the votes. So just over half. There you it's go. It's a mammoth console, isn't it? it yeah, is yeah. I, 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 I'm actually shocked it didn't get 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 all the way to sixty. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of nice to, uh, to continue to see the love for the Dreamcast. And by the way, I like the Saturn. Don't get me wrong, but I, I, the problem with the Saturn was we were we weren't allowed really on the Saturn at the time. We were um, because I was running tests. We were forced to do all the other, you know, wind down the, you yeah. know, other platforms. So, yeah. you know, we we had to look at the console kind of lovingly from afar, um, where we got to participate a little more. We didn't get to make games uh, for the Dreamcast because it obviously we then got spun off to Sega Soft, but um, some of the people in development were working with it. Um, so we had a lot of love for the whole design and the way it ran. You know, we mm. wish we could have done a lot more on it. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm with Keith in that I, I did love the arcade um, feel of uh, the Saturn because yeah. for me, you know, I had to do power drift and I had to do it, take take it from playing the arcade machine in the office and then 
turn that down to a game that ran on an IBM, IBM PC, <laughs> with, you know, with CGA graphics. Yeah. So when I looked at the Saturn, I was like so weepy, you know, thinking about if I could make oh, power yeah. drift. It's great on the Saturn as well. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, but I wanted to ask you, so it's going back to my power drift question, actually, before we go into Sonic. Yeah. Um, why wasn't there a Mega Drive version of Power Drift? Um, it, it, it just, they didn't have the confidence, I think, that it could be. It's on the PC engine. It's on the PC yeah. engine. It's yeah, like you say, I, you, I, you did those I, other ports that obviously yeah, are lesser I, powered I, things. I, I think because it would have required their blessing to do it. And they mm. would have likely wanted to do it, so it would have been an SOJ product. Uh, and I think they mm. felt the window for it had passed somewhat. Mm. Because, oh, shame, from, 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 because from their perspective, remember, they're making all these super successful coin-op machines, one after mm. another. And they're moving up you know, generations as far as the boards that run them and the tech that run them. Mm. So for them, that, that, that was like already a retro thing. And, and hmm. SOJ didn't like to go back a lot um, until, you know, obviously now they go back um, and do retro stuff. But in those days, it was all about let's keep moving forward, let's keep moving forward. Unless it was uh, a virtual product. Uh, right. Oh, uh, yeah. Virtual virtual product, yeah. It was going to land on the next gen machines. And mm -hmm. see, from their view, um, just uh, the way that Power Drift works, it's not true 3D. No, it's no. yeah, it's just sprites, isn't it? It's not. It's just it's just sprites, and so it's amazing they had, how they did it. I mean, I look at oh, it now, I, and I know it's all still sprites, and I'm uh, like, how are they doing? It goes up oh. and down, and it's yeah, it's. I, um, I I played the machine till almost the steering wheel fell off. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Keeper okay. Michael, you're not the biggest power drift fans here. <laughs> oh, I I just I I could not get over how they were able to create that motion and yeah. just mm -hmm. how tight and how well designed and how responsive. Yeah a sprite driven engine like that could be just mm. it was i i understood the technology and the, the nature behind it and it just mystified me to this day to how they got the feel because that was that that was sega's coin op people's thing was they mm. they not only nailed the technology but they always got the feel of of a coin op beyond anybody else's coin op i'm sorry i'm, I'm I, I will go to my grave on that statement that there's no better coin op designer in the world than sega with you yeah don't worry we're not gonna argue with that we're not gonna <laughs> argue with that but yeah so we'll, we'll come off the arcade thing was something i want to cover a bit later but um sonic rob hasn't spoken for a little while sonic um what so this, a couple of questions all wrapped into one really was he the making of sega why was he the making of Sega? <laughs> and what makes him special in 2020? Um, oh, oof, uh, that last one. I don't know if I'm qualified on that last one, but um, <laughs> well, because I don't, I, 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 you know, I, I, I'm not attached to their current thinking on what they're doing with him in 2020. Um, he fundamentally came at a time where we needed a Mario. Mm. And it wasn't that he was designed to be a Mario, but he, once they saw him, they realized he could be a competitor to Mario. But then when the first playable came in and you revved him up and he went spinning around and doing the loop to loop, it was over. I mean, we were all just, our jaws were on the floor. Mm. I mean, none of our games look like this. Nobody's games look like this. Um, Nintendo's games didn't look like that. And I, it was, it was really the game design and the technology. Then Sega of America really, I think, had its most major and successful relationship with SOJ in pushing back mm -hmm. and getting yeah. in, in, in constantly reworking him, which yeah. is well covered in the Blake Harris book. And yeah. every bit of that is true. Um, um, a lot of it is down to, well, he puts a lot of it down to Tom Kalinske. And obviously, I've had a bit of a chat with Tom. Um, yeah, you know, um, lovely guy. Al, Al Nielsen. Al Nielsen. Yeah, Al Nielsen, Al, yeah, yeah, and 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 oh god, I forgot her name. Uh, she's Bert's wife. Um, oh, she's yeah. in the book. Um, yes, I know, I know. Yeah, her I, name you is know. Me, oh yeah. god. Uh, oh boy, uh, it's just been so many years. Um, she also should get a huge part because they were the ones that defined, um, you know, who he was, how he was going to act, and so then the the, the foot tapping you know was in the first thing but then other things got added um and um and 
they really got um, SOJ and SOA to agree what his character was going to be, how kind of he was going to be marketed. Um, and uh, and that I think that synergy, that that rare thing where SOJ and SOA were on the same page mm -hmm. um, and were able to cooperate with each other and bend both ways mm -hmm. um, made him the most powerful character in Sega history mm -hmm. um, because that was so rare. And of course, just the awesome game design and technology mm -hmm. behind it and the right character, right time. I mean, you know, um, when your whole thing is resting on a plumber that doesn't have a distinct personality mm -hmm. and you and they weren't investing in really making a personality for him mm -hmm. um uh, you know they 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 let a really horrible movie get out there <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know uh you know uh that that was the success we knew we knew who we were and we knew who our younger siblings if you had them or our friends our younger friends were and we knew they were going to eat up that it was eight you know 80s coming into the 90s mm -hmm. you know all that attitude in the movies it was just perfect timing and he he was perfect you know for that okay yeah. so you know, it took, oh took and, and, and the, uh, the 2020 real quick to that mm -hmm. i think he's still relevant um i i, I think the movie uh, introduced him to a whole new thing. Um, it, it's interesting, uh, you know, that movie made quite a journey. Um, mm. uh, I, you mm. know, when you think what it could have been and then what it became. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a pretty good situation. I think I think they got a real positive outcome out of that. Mm. And I think it's up to what they do with him now. I think I think he mm. I think he's scheduled for reinvention, in my opinion. Mm. But I think, you know, I could uh, hear Al Nielsen from wherever he's currently living screaming no. Um, but that's that's my opinion is that, you know, um, even Mickey Mouse got hipped up at some point and mm -hmm. modified and, and modernized a little. You know, mm -hmm. you could nudge him in the right direction. I like really 2020 the, Sonic. Yeah, well, 29. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 20, yeah. 20, 20 I mean, Sonic. they all of the film, you know, not verbatim, but update them a little, make them a mm -hmm. little, you know, you, you, you now have got a different world in a sense. You've got some rules you put there that's kind of interesting. Um, you well, know, the thing is, he's with us now, isn't he? He's with us in the human world now. He's yeah, in the, yeah, um... yeah. So, I mean, I don't know where they're going to go. Are they, are they going to ignore that completely and just stick to the, you know, he's in the green zone for the rest of his life? Um, <laughs> I, I don't I don't think so. I think it's time to, you know, give them some new places. I, and yeah. I, it's not my place to tell them what to do, um, yeah. even though, I, you know, tweet them, day, tweet them a few <laughs> things and just see if they yeah, and, and any day of the week. I, I'd be down there tomorrow to, to, to run that place. I'll no. tell you that. And he, I, I'm sure a lot of um, the ex Sega people would also I'm sure Ed Enunciata would probably yeah. feel that. <laughs> And a lot of others, you know, look at that and go, man, if I could just get a hold of all that IP and uh, yeah, look and, at it exactly and, and reunify it and, and get some of the old team back and build a. Can whole you new imagine? Team. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine? Sorry, Rob, you, um, you wanted to, to ask. Yeah, um, sorry, Rob. Well, well, no, I was going to kind of, I guess, bring up the exact same point and ask: Do you remember probably about late 2019 when the first actual trailer for the Sonic film came out mm. and we were talking about how awful it looked? Yeah. Oh, can you, like, can you imagine then, like, if someone had told you that's going to be the fourth highest grossing film of 2020 worldwide? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 I couldn't believe it. I mean, yeah. when I, when I saw it, you have to understand, I mean, th no one messed with Sonic. You know, mm. uh, it, it was, it, you know, like you could not, if I wanted to put Sonic in the opening to Eternal Champions, there was no way that was <laughs> uh -huh. ever Did you try at least? You know? <laughs> no. Just put him in the Sega I mean, bit. He's, yeah, I mean, yeah. He's Sega no, bit, that's but, what yeah. I mean. You know, where all the yeah. characters walk out and they destroyed. I yeah. actually said, can't we have Sonic walk out and uh, act like be, my, oh, my mistake, he's in the same game. And it was like, no, <laughs> absolutely oh. not. You know, um, character cool. unlockable. That'd be great. Yeah, you and 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 that and that was the case for everybody. He 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 was important and untouchable. So when I saw that first trailer, I was like, oh my god! You know, like <laughs> there are people who are having an emotional meltdown. I mean, Al Nielsen. They must have had to like put him in a straitjacket. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, uh, and we then need to catch up with Al again. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and. 
Yeah, and then, you know, I don't know what he thinks of the final outcome, but I'm sure he's got to be happy it went from point A to point B. Um, I think they uh, and, really caught, got the essence of him personally. Yeah. I think, you know, Sonic was, you know, at least he always seen that. an affable, yeah, an affable character, you know, looks after his friends and, okay, yeah. he's, a, he's a little bit of a dick, isn't he? But that, <laughs> that kind of cockiness and that kind of, you know, it's, yeah. it's appealing, isn't it? It's appealing he's, to he's, he's, o- he's overconfident. I mean, that's the way mm. he was kind of in the comic books and the things. And, and, and I'm totally, uh, I, I think they captured it. And, you know, it went from a horror film um, with yeah, the teeth. Really I mean, it was exactly. like, oof. I mean, it was like altered world Sonic. I mean, you know, it was like, because I, I always joke with my friends that, you know, here in the U.S., it's been a rough time for the last four years. And uh, <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. We've, we've sort of been on Earth 2. And I'm like, oh, man, that Sonic's like on Earth 8. Man. That, that's, that, that's a horrible Earth. And maybe, uh, you know, yeah. maybe Earth 2 is not so bad. Yeah, send that Sonic back. Yeah, no, well, they... yeah, like uh, the big thing Sonic and Star Wars really have in common is that they have this whole. There's been like this long-running Sonic the Hedgehog comic book. Just like there's yes. all these like kind of Star Wars side novels, and there's this whole like other kind of part of the universe which just no the mainstream fans never get near, probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I just find yeah, it interesting. That... Yeah, the fan fiction. Don't do yeah. fan fiction. No, no. Oh god. I, 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 no. There, there, there's some eternal champion fan fiction. I was like, oh, horror, horror. No way. Uh, oh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no. It's it's interesting because yeah, I don't know what is canon anymore in the Sonic universe. Like you used to know yeah. what was canon mm-hmm. and not canon. Yeah, it's like because there's what, there's some what? stuff in the yeah comic books that are just not in the game that's not really canon. Um, and you know, at any given time, that's kind of a flexible thing. And now, the movie with this whole concept that the rings are warp, you know, warp. Yeah, the uh, thing that kind of works a little bit. Yeah, though, it, yeah, it, it kind of works in the game. Oh yeah, it it totally works. But it 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 it. It, I think they limited to nine worlds or something. I forget. They, it was a small number of worlds, and I, I thought that was interesting that they chose to do that limit, because they may regret it if they if this becomes a long running thing. You know, to your point about how you build out a universe, because mm-hmm. they were always careful to keep Sonic a very wide universe. You know, mm. where they could bring anything in if they really wanted to, but they were also real tight about it and they got to mm. give them mad respect for that because other mm. franchises have really gone south when you lose control. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we'll bring in Adrian and Keith again. I just want to ask a few, a few, a few things about Sonic. So mm. you guys, I mean, Sonic games are massive, aren't they? What do you think, do you think, what, why is he still so big? Is it because the Mega Drive games were so good? Is it because the character is good? You know, what, you know, why wasn't there a good Sonic game on the Saturn? There's a few kind of things kind of spinning mm. around my head at the minute. Um, we'll go to Keith first. I think he's. Um, I mean, in terms of why he's still popular, I think it's, it's a character that would always appeal to kids of a certain age. Mm. You know, me obviously, yeah. me and uh, Aid can talk. We're parents of boys of a certain age, um, just like we were those boys of that age. You know, um, so it, it, it'll always appeal to kids. Um, <sighs> I'm not sure in terms of the games. Obviously, it's been a, up until we got Sonic Mania. How good were the games? How good were the original? Mega how good were the originals? Mm. Well, the original, what to me, the first two were perfection almost um, yeah. in terms of what I wanted from a platform game. Um, a lot of people prefer the third, um, but yeah, I mean they were proper sort of touchstones in gaming for for well a lot for millions of people. Um, if you didn't grow up playing Super Mario Brothers, which I didn't, yeah. you know, this, this for, you know, the, for maybe a people of five, six years older than us, they'll always go with that. But yeah, I mean, it's it's the first real landmark for me, I think, in gaming. Sonic One, mm. although we, you know, we had the Master System and I played that, and you know, played the old game in the arcade when I got a chance. But that was the first huge thing at home was playing Sonic One on the Mega Drive. Mm. Um, yeah, it felt like the arcade at home. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember playing games on the Spectrum, uh, early Amiga games like New Zealand Story, which are good, you know, good platformers. Chuck Rock, good platformers. Uh, even Zool, I put my hands up, you know. Uh, no, not Zool. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no,
it, even though I thought the Amiga was better at certain games, uh, genres, for example, we have we have this discussion quite often, Rob and I, like, Rrr. but I just think the Mega Drive uh, somehow I don't know how they did it. They captured like Sonic, Sonic Two. I just couldn't believe it. It was like this this is not possible. It's too fast. How can a console capture it so well? It's it's unbelievable. Um, I think that is true. But the other thing is Sonic is such a classic character in terms of design and kind of personality that i mean in contrast to say nintendo where you have all these great zelda and mario games but it does sometimes kind of feel like the games are just it feels like the characters just inserted into the games whereas the games as opposed to the games kind of going around the character maybe you'll disagree with that for the zelda games adrian but i think sonic is such like a timeless and perfectly conceptualized character that doesn't really matter how many bad games he's in the character will still feel fresh and vivid in the same way that Spider-Man will still feel kind of fresh yeah. and vivid. And yeah, even yeah. though he, he went through a, like a long time of just being in terrible comics in the <laughs> 90s and 2000s. But, you know, you look at him now, still a massive kind of fictional character. Mm. Look at Earthworm Jim. He had two great games and a third game. And it was a real stinker. It's kind of, I know, and I think he's coming back, to be fair, with an exclusive game for that Tommy Tallarico console. I can't remember what it's called now. Yeah, and hopefully it's it a great game. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying that kind of destroyed that 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 IP, one for a better term. Um, it's weird, isn't it? Sonic just keeps coming back. He's the underdog mm. in my eyes. And interestingly, I, again, I might be talking rubbish here, but I think hedgehogs aren't particularly known in Japan. They're quite unusual animals. I think that they're, they're, we have them in Britain. I've never seen a hedgehog actually in the in the wild, but they do obviously have an out. And I think they're quite mysterious animals. So I think, and obviously they're not blue, believe it or not. Um, picking a really unusual animal for a lot of countries. I Wasn't think it like Mr. Thing. Needle Mouse or something at <laughs> the beginning? Yeah. Right? yeah. I'm getting this yeah. from, sorry, Michael, I'm getting this from, <laughs> from Do you have hedgehogs in the US, Michael? I know it's a weird question. I do. I'm sorry, I missed that, Adrian. Do you have hedgehogs in the U.S.? I don't know. If yes, that's... we do have hedgehogs, but like you said, they're they're uh, animals that tend to hide and burrow. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, uh, I've only seen them like on YouTube. Mm. Uh, they're cute little animals. I mean, Amazing. you know, uh, they're not known so... for their speed. Let's be honest. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not, uh, yeah, not blue. Not known for speed. I mean, it was it, it was a weird pick, but. Because he, the spiky idea, the spikes were the key, right? The, mm -hmm. the attitude and the spikes. Yeah. So they had to come up with, and for whatever reason, it just worked. You know, when, when you spoke the full title, it, it just, everybody kind of forgot about the hedgehog part. To be honest, people, almost everybody just refers to him as Sonic. Mm -hmm. yeah, not, you know, especially you're, you're nowadays, just, yeah. Yeah, he's just yeah. Sonic. Uh, you know, the hedgehog, you know, from, from their point of view, he's just a cartoon, you know, character or in the case of the movie, a, a real character, but still, you know. Um, do you know, actually, a, Michael, do you know, I wanted to ask you something about Sonic. Um, do you know why there wasn't a Sonic platform game on the Saturn? Mm. I mentioned uh, it earlier, but I know, they had, I know they had Sonic R, which is a bit of an experience. Um, yeah, there was a game what, in development, wasn't there? I, I think, yeah, my guess is, is that you have to understand that the, the whole transition between Saturn and um, Dreamcast was a very complicated thing as far as trying to get what SOJ was going to do mm -hmm. and I think what S STI was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can't speak to that one. I really don't know. But my guess would be that they really were worried about getting it right on the Dreamcast at a certain point when they realized they were going to move on from the Saturn. Gotcha. Yeah. And so I think something was abandoned or um, it was certainly underdeveloped, probably mm -hmm. a much smaller team than that normally would be put on it. That's yeah. my guess. I didn't, I, I didn't have any insight to what was going on at STI versus yeah. SOJ at the time. Yeah. But I know that they, I know that they were struggling to because, um, uh, what is it, Nights? Mm. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Nights, Nights into Dreams. Nights into yeah. dreams yeah. Yes, yeah. So, so, so the Sonic part of the Sonic team was doing that. Mm. Um, so that took uh, resources away from doing other Sonic stuff. Yeah. And any time a team came on, even if it was a Sega of Japan team, if they were going to do a Sonic, there was always a lot of concern mm. and consternation. Yeah. Were they up to the task? Yeah. So that really is... I, I, this is my guess. It's purely a guess. It was just a, ca a capacity a capacity issue. 
It sounds just, like a but, good calculated guess. Um, yeah. I mean, person. I mean, the the adventure games were were pretty well received on the Dreamcast, but I don't know personally. I don't like them. I I, I for me, Sonic is a two D guy, apart from apart from in the movie. But, yeah, my yeah, my guess on that is is those were other teams than the core team, mm -hmm. with some core team members, and they had skill sets that really didn't allow um, for the more traditional game, and they were waiting for to put a team that they could trust around that. Mm -hmm. um, and also they were under pressure to show off the 3D. There was a huge pressure mm -hmm. to, you know, you got to, you know, it, it always drove me nuts that, you know, they just completely abandoned all fighting games in 2D. Mm, you know? Yeah, and, really. And, and, you, and, and you see now there's a return now to, you know, essentially locking in, even if it's a 3D thing, a 2D Fighting, a yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. into, into a 2D fighting experience um, because that's still valid. And I felt that way about all the products. Whatever you were doing, um, you know, uh, you 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 suddenly had to do it in 3D, even if yeah. it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, like if you were going to do columns, let's just say on the Dreamcast, they'd be like, "Oh, you got to do it <laughs> with, a, you know, 3D and a swiveling yeah. camera." You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that yeah would, you, you could not get a 2D design through. It was it's like the enough. N64. I think I did. I thought, is there any 2D games in the N64? I think there's like two of them. Yeah. <laughs> <I didn't, laughs> like everything else is like mm. dodgy. And I like the N64. I'm a big fan, but it's quite grainy 3D. It's like, wow. Yeah. But, you know, I wonder how powerful the N64 would be at the 2D sprites, but I guess we'll never know properly. We'll get yeah, on I mean, N64 next week. Yeah, right? well, they, they did fall into the same trap, right? Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that was always, I think, like for me, the dream was always arcade at home yeah and yeah. then you kind of get these consoles and yeah if you were into say virtual fighter or virtual racing mm -hmm. fantastic but you just you never quite got that ultra realistic arcade stuff at home for the most part obviously daytona that kind of stuff but not yeah. the kind of games you grew up playing that's well, the I, irony I though rob that's the irony of it the you know the games that we got on the saturn daytona sega rally they looked good and they were fantastic but they weren't arcade They're perfect quite, quite but the good. 2d games we got your x-men versus street mm -hmm. fighter your street fighter get they were they were almost arcade perfect you yeah. needed your extra ram though didn't you for those ones you did need your little ram cart Bennett, but it's such a bit. shame that they abandoned the 2D stuff because the Saturn was great at it. Oh. The Saturn was great. Well, you know, we've spoken at length about the Saturn. Yes, sorry, we, won't, we, won't, we won't go into that again. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Um, but no, I, was just, about... I was just oh, going to say one thing. The SNK, when mm. you played like the SNK, yeah. that, that was so fun, man. I mean, yeah. it was so over I was going to afford one of those, Michael. No, it, I, exactly. I mean, we had... <laughs> We, we had one that we could play with so um yeah, yeah, yeah. but we would play on that thing constantly because it was it was it was the arcade jealous it was the arcade in your living room but yeah at like 70 well i think it was about over 100 pounds of cartridge or something over oh, here it was so, it was crazy yeah yeah we, no that was never going to fly with us same, <laughs> same here and adrian i owned a, a specky as well brilliant yes. Yes. classic not many Americans do, apparently. No, cool. and, no, yeah. no. And you're a big Amiga fan, aren't you, Michael? Which is also yes. a little bit unheard of in the US. Amer yeah, I, Adrian, I actually isn't the Amiga I actually, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I actually sold Amigas. Mm. Oh, you did, didn't you? In your, in, yeah, in the I would talk. Yeah. I would talk people out of not getting Atari STs and nice. making bad life decisions. Yeah. We respect all people, even people that like Atari STs, just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think a few of our listeners like an Atari ST. Yeah. So I know. I think Andy I know. does, and I, yeah. I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't pick on them, but I, I, mean, I they're easy to they suffered enough. I, 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 I felt horrible though when like you'd have a parent making that call and you're like, no, Amiga, Amiga, trust me, Amiga or a PC. Either way, the kid's going to be at. okay. The ST, here's the three games we have. <laughs> I know. Ouch. Anyway, um, right. So Sega's obviously the home consoles had a massive impact on us, but it was about trying to bring that arcade feel to the home. What about the actual arcade feel? What about the actual going to arcades, playing those Sega games? Um, I, I said key for last, um, but Adrian, your favorite Sega arcade games, go. Oh man, um, oh, I'm blowing foot in the spot of it here. I just used to like watching people play like Virtual Fighter and like the, the, the sort of really big 3D games that you couldn't get at home at the time. I, just, I almost like to just watch people play it. I was like, this is crazy. I can't believe it. Um, it was the future. It was the future. <laughs> um, 
you know, I'm, I'm oh, probably my favourite was oh, arcade wise. I also like the shooting games. I try, can't remember what they are. Like, is is Virtual Cop? Yeah, yeah. Virtual. Virtu- and actually, I remember getting on the PC. I used to play that a lot on the PC. Mm-hmm. They made a copy of it with my ma- mouse. I was like, oh look, I can shoot people. It wasn't quite the same. But yeah, Virtual Cop was an awesome game. I love that. So yeah, that I did. Love, I did like watching people play the virtual games. I have to say, just that weird three D polygon. It was like so. Oh yeah, sweet. when you first saw that, yeah, the, the virtual stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Rob, um, I spoke about it when we did the episode Virtual Racing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, my yeah. Favorite. Golden Axe, great as well, obviously. Oh, but yeah, I think Virtual Racing was the one that really blew me away. Nice, nice, uh, Keith. My favorite Sega arcade machine. Well, oh, these machines, no, no, there's not really. not limited to one. This is basically, well, this is oh, like okay. a Sega, Se- Sega homage kind of. Just say Power Drift, mate. Just say Power Drift, another <laughs> Well, words. because it, the Power Drift, but Power Drift and Daytona. Mm. Eight player Daytona. I mean, ah. like, that blew my mind. I talk about it blew my mind when I saw that for the first. Oh, yeah. Yep. All, all eight machines <laughs> hooked up. That was just insane yeah. and you had the tv screens in between each one so you could see people's faces with the cameras pointing at them um it was just you know and the noise it was just incredible um and that yeah virtual racing and going way back the first the original outrun cabinet mm. the original hang on cabinet uh manx tt superbike like i could just go on after burner the you know the mm. one that one that's in terminator 2 the cabinet. one that makes you feel like you want to vom everywhere after you yeah. get off it oh. like, yeah after burner man i mean talk it. about what Sega means to me, it's all that. I mean, it's just no one ever came close. No one came close. But yeah, for me, Power Drift and Daytona are the two mm-hmm. two favourites. What was that magic though? You knew that when you went to an arcade and there was a Sega machine, you knew it'd be good. Like you just kind of just knew it. And when I remember, okay, it's been a few years. I've I've had the Master System and the Amiga, and just seeing that virtual racing cab, and just oh. hit like the, with the massive speakers. Yes. And it was two pound to go, and I was like, I'm going to put my two pounds in here. <laughs> yeah, you like I'm have a good what time. was virtually a full size Formula One car as well. It's just ridiculous. It was just so ridiculous. But Sega was so good at that. And now you can go back and even at the time, like the outruns and your afterburners. And I don't know, M- Michael, what, was there like a formula? Was there like a like a rule book they followed, or was there some kind of you know? Was it just because of the like people like Yu Suzuki or I don't I don't understand how 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 they made so many good ones? Yeah, they just they had massive talent at both the hardware and software levels. I think they kept a consistency so that when they were on a given platform, they just maximized the game on that platform, mm-hmm. and then so you saw okay, we're going to do everything uh, with bitmaps. And we're going to push it till we can. And then all of a sudden, the virtual stuff launches, and mm-hmm. there's all these virtual <laughs> products, um, and they have a consistency in their look and feel. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know if there was a rule book per se, <laughs> or just really good. Well, in, the, in yeah. some cases, there's rule books. Like we had a test rule book, or we had um, certain standards, you know. Um, they may have had some of that, but it came down to really good management. I mean, that that division was just ran so tightly. And I'll, I'll say you you guys wouldn't have this experience, but since I'm older, I was in the height of the coin op world. You know, mm. I'm 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 Matthew Broderick in War Games. What a film mm. that is! Yeah, so that film, yeah. that that's my, that's who I am at that. Um, age in a sense, and I have mega arcades, and I'm going and winning um, tokens by beating like games like Bump and Jump and Star Castle. Mm. But like you, you know, Battle Zone was like the biggest 3D thing. It was you know vector mm. graphics. It was a Atari game where you drove a tank around. No, so you have to understand oh, yeah. that's my arcade experience. So I am so jealous of you guys because I'm like, <laughs> you, know, you got you, you know, Sega shows up and just innovates and just destroys all these old guys that, you know, um, with just a whole different level of play, not only just tech, but it's just how tight the play was. Mm-hmm. In those days, it was the controls like bump and jump where I'd go get these tokens. They were so sloppy and bad and, you know, and the joystick. <laughs> like the hardware was so janky and 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 um and and then comes Sega and just everything's perfect from you know from right down to any joystick or button I mean you know I just think about like Street Fighter machines I was around when Street Fighter 1 with those giant ridiculous oh. buttons 
<laughs> you know, they, you know, those big Too plunger good. buttons. And, and, but I'm like, there's no way Sega would have ever designed something like that. That was just bad design. Or oh, the first it's, Street Fighter, number one. Yeah, not, not Street Fighter. Yeah, with the no, pad. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. with the giant pad, that one. And you look at that and you go, how did that get out of hardware design? <laughs> yeah. Like, the game was fine. It was just, th who thought of giant smash buttons was the idea, to, you know, <laughs> for a dexterity-based game. And, and, and Sega never made those mistakes. I'm sure there was a clunker somewhere in there, but I can't remember if there was. They have been consigned to history. Anyway. Can I ask a really quick question, Michael? Because I know we, we spoke a lot on Eternal Champions, so you don't have to go too much detail. But do you think you would, you would have loved it for that to be an arcade game? Uh, oh, abs well? abs absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish we would have had this sort of reciprocal experience. You know, I, I wish I could have been, a, you know, my only contribution to the Virtual Fighter was me hijacking the Virtual Fighter 32X team, mm -hmm. um, much to their dismay. Mm -hmm. um, which was, again, what happened when they put a younger, kind of underdeveloped team, they were able to take feedback and listen to me. And I, I got to improve, in some opinion, people like that product um, mm -hmm. and some of the improvements that were made in there. Mm -hmm. So I wish I could have participated in giving my fighting game experience to them. Mm -hmm. I think it would have helped Virtua. Uh, I think they could have done better in the story development of it. I would have loved to have been part of that. And vice versa, I would have loved to have handed them my characters and trusted them in their ability to execute it. Could you mm. imagine? Yeah. 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 yeah, would have yeah. would have been one of the biggest honors. But that that flow just never happened. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I thought for a while maybe they would take a bite at Echo because Echo did better in Sega of Japan. And mm -hmm. and even then they didn't, and that that was uh, I'm sure a heartbreaker for Ed because I think mm -hmm. that would have made a great arcade experience had you know mm. they developed. Yeah. I hope yeah. we can get him on the podcast one day. I'd love to talk to Ed. I can't pronounce his surname. <laughs> I just got no, 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 Um He used to never do interviews. He does them now. Um, oh, does he? Because I remember because yeah. he he followed us on Twitter years ago, and then obviously I followed him back. I was like, oh, we're good, Ed. All right. And then um, I was like, oh, come on the podcast. Yeah. He just. Decided. Why well, I messaged him for about yeah. two years ago, and he was like, "Oh, maybe, maybe not." He's a bit unsure, but let's hopefully. get him on. Let's yeah, yeah I, I, I'm more than happy to. Uh, Ed and I are, um, we, we competed against each other. You know, he, he, uh, Alpha to what he jokingly called Amoeba, when it got smaller. <laughs> Um, he and 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 Omega. So at times we, you know, kind of would bump heads. Um, it was it was hard for us because, you know, we were running two very different vi visions of how our groups ran, and then like he had to trust me that I wasn't fooling around with test or operation mm -hmm. stuff. He famously went to an operation meeting and like fell asleep, and Tom Kalinsky was there also asleep at the boredom of the operation. <laughs> Him. And it was the last time he ever came to a meeting, and he's like, "You <laughs> deal with this. I trust you." <laughs> um, so yeah, but we're we have continued to stay in touch, and and I consider him a friend. So I I can vouch for you guys and talk give him to a him nudge. Him. Yeah, thanks, yeah, Michael. I'll give him <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, now obviously RK is very important as well. The journey now to where Sega is. Mm. Obviously, they still publish things. Um, they're still strong in arcades. You know, this is still a big thing for them. They 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 say they've got a big announcement, and then it turns out it's something called what was it called? Something gaming. Oh yeah, the, those Connected little arcade thing. Yeah, the um, yeah, what was it called? Uh, and the mini game gears. That the was mini the... game gears. Thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. everyone, everyone was like, "Oh, so you're gonna get 2. back into the console?" It was so much Dreamcast two. Uh, Dreamcast two, oh, right? Yeah. I, I, I know. I was looking at that and seeing those people say that, and I'm like, you are so wrong. <laughs> so, because in, in, in today, the hype, in today, the hype, Michael, was ridiculous. Yeah. Like, you had all these people, like, clambering over themselves, going, oh, my God. Yeah. And today, they say something yeah. amazing, and then they didn't. So, yeah, even, was... even Apple can't. It, Apple used to be able to be keep their secrets, and even they can't keep their secrets in today's world because yeah. stuff has to be manufactured in these yeah. facilities in China and someone's going to just take one off the line at some point yeah. and it's going to get out there. So there'd be no way they could make a console. Um, you know, uh, the See, only reason why yeah. it was, yeah, the only reason why those Game Gears didn't get leaked is everybody's like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> no, they're, they're too small, yeah. Mike. They yeah. get a good picture. They're just minuscule. 
Yeah, but yeah. Apparently, I mean, you can't I, even get your fingers on them to actually even play it properly. <laughs> yeah, like, they, I they mean, I are just ornamental. Like, yeah, just I don't. Yeah, I don't speak badly of any Sega thing, but I'm saying <laughs> I, I, I don't think from a um, we're going to trade this info to a, a gaming site. The gaming site wouldn't have even been excited about getting that info if they uh, had to pay for it yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I, I I knew that big disappointment was coming, but I wasn't going to get out there because I don't want anything get you know appearing like I have some sour grapes against the company. <laughs> I, I I I bleed blue to this day. So there we go. Um, the question was, I think we'll we'll I'll, I'll come to you, Michael, in a bit. I just want to ask the boy something. So basically, the question is, do you? think or do you you know would you have liked sega to still be making consoles to this day 2020 uh what's up with adrian well obviously uh, wii u was a huge failure for nintendo and the switch was their last chance apparently let's roll of the dice roll of the dice they said this doesn't work that we're not going to make consoles ever again the switch has been a huge success and obviously i think we can pretty pretty much say there'll be another console sound alive in nintendo probably the same for sega dreamcast which i respect a lot was was not successful compared to the playstation i don't personally i would love it if sega dust themselves down for a few years looked at the competition and tried something a little bit different you know go down the innovation route a little bit more i mean nintendo do not have the most powerful consoles but they try things different to stand out from the crowd i wish sega would I think it's probably too late now. I, I hope I hope I'm wrong, but maybe just look at what's going on and Xbox and PS, PlayStation, whatever it is, whatever number you want to put onto it, or X, they're quite similar in how they do things, or like powerful beasts. So if I was say I'd think they're well, PCs look. at the end of the day. I mean, if you look at like yeah. Xboxes yeah. and Playstations now, this generation just... is just a super yeah. duper PC. That's yeah, what sure. it is. Oh, it's, just an affordable, it. it's an affordable gaming PC in a mm. box. I, I yeah. Still, yeah, there's a gap in the market for something different, be it mm. all arcades, be it accessories you can add on. I don't know really. Well, I'm not an expert, but I, I, I feel I just wish Sega was still around. I really do. And I, I, I just think the Dreamcast deserved more. I mm. can understand why it didn't really catch on. It, it, arguably more powerful than the PlayStation 2, wasn't it, in, in many ways. I, I just wish Sega did not give up so easily. I just wish they had one more chance, personally, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. What would that be? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I think if we look at Sega today, they aren't. They literally aren't the same company we we're no, talking okay. about 25 years ago. I think they merged with a pachinko maker called Sammy. They so make like, mainly Sega pachinko Sam. machines. Yeah, I think that's their thing. Yep. Now. That's what they get all their money from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so I don't even know if they would have the means to really do another system. I don't know. I would have said. No, just let it lie. But I think listening to Adrian talking about that a minute ago made me think, yeah, actually, if maybe if there was a kind of new system that was doing, that was just kind of like pick up and play games and you could really connect quite easily to other people to play with them. There was like just very direct kind of games where you don't spend half an hour looking for something. Yeah. It's not like, say, an hour, like 20 hour, 20, 30, I don't even know how long games are these days. I'll, I'll oh, like long, hundreds of very hours long. Now. Oh, Yeah, maybe. like uh, something yeah. that doesn't take hundreds of hours to get through. Mm. I'd be interested in that. In that. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, that's what I want, that kind of immediate arcade type feel. And yeah. I don't, it's a big reason why I'm just not into gaming right now. It's just, it takes too long and I do not have that level of spare time. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Keith, do you reckon, do, 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 would you have loved to seen a Dreamcast 2, Dreamcast 3? I would have. I don't think it was ever realistic for anyone to expect them to suddenly rock up in 2020 yeah. and say, here's our competitor. Well, they could have, um, to be fair, they could have just built a PC and just put a Dreamcast shell around it. True, and, you know, true. They could have just done that, couldn't they? So. I, did, I mean, I did wonder back in the early 2000s if they were going to fully jump into bed with Microsoft. Mm. And yeah, and rather absolutely. than have you know the, with the Dreamcast and with yeah. the Windows built in it, and obviously mm. the online capabilities, and it it innovate they innovated before the technology was there really, like before yeah. proper broadband speeds were there. And I've often yeah. wondered if that could have been the way to go. And then instead of Xbox, but then instead of Xbox and PlayStation, maybe we'd just have Sega, Nintendo, and PlayStation. I don't know. And and the, the thing, uh, the other thing, I think, well, maybe if they couldn't get back into the home console market maybe they could but they, they could you know put all their efforts into arcades but there's no money to be made yeah. and they're accepting these pachinko, pachinko machines, machines. Yeah. and it, when if, well, like you guys remember they just uh, sold their their um their most identifiable largest arcade 
Um, they did, yeah. The one in, yeah so I, I think that's I think that's yeah. pretty telling yeah. about what they're thinking arcade wise. Well, and, and a couple of years yeah, ago, really. I got really excited um, about the Daytona Two. No, it wasn't Daytona Two. Sorry, um, but it was the new Daytona game, the yeah. new ar new arcade game, and it was so exciting. But it wasn't really, it wasn't really Sega. I can't remember who yeah. it was developed by. I think it was, I think it was a British company um, that had quite a lot of involvement in it, and it just, that it wasn't, wasn't the same. It just yeah. wasn't the same. It just didn't have that magic. Um, I mean, um, the funny thing is, it's looking back, it's. It, it's kind of weird that the Xbox did take off because if you look at the other kind of attempts Microsoft already made with hardware, like the Zune or like kind of taking over Nokia and running them into the ground. Yep. They do not have a good track record with hardware at all. Um, part of that is is the, the team that they got was an exceptionally good team. Um, and that's always important when you build a console. You need yep. both the hardware and software guys to be in sync. Mm -hmm. And they had great leadership on both sides of the, that group. And um, that's how they were able to make it happen, is that they literally created the group from the ground up instead mm -hmm. of acquiring them and trying to Microsoft them. Mm -hmm. um, and um, also, they stayed hands off relatively of the Xbox group. Yeah. Um, that was also very important, where they got their hands into Nokia directly and other things, and that's mm -hmm. where they were making mistakes they almost bought yahoo so you know um at one point and they dodged a bullet there um well, I th but i think yahoo like the kind of thing you're describing is basically what yahoo would do every time they took over a company <laughs> oh yeah oh oh Bob, let me tell you it is heartbreaking to see i i, I was there earlier um, I was there for three years and, and ran their entertainment group and their um, media group. So that was like mu music, movies, TV, chat events, games, and then travel news, weather, sports, and local verticals. And, mm. you know, I came from gaming and I was running all that. Um, but I was doing that from a view of interactivity and trying to bring the company towards that. Um, and, you know, you look at fantasy sports um, or, you know, any sort of more interactive thing that Yahoo had developed in those days. And mm. then they just sort of gave up. And it started with the broadcast.com, you know, mm. debacle. Um, and then they just started... Um, acquiring tr thinking they could acquire their way out uh mm -hmm. instead of you know um retrusting in the team they built let them get through the hard times and and come back from it um and yeah it was heartbreaking to see them buy tumblr destroy it flicker mm -hmm. nearly nearly uh, destroy it. yeah you know flicker flicker luckily found a buyer that makes sense for them yeah. Um, so they, they they sort of still exist. I mean, it goes on and on, um, and and then you know some really bad leadership at the end. That you know, um, yeah, it's it, it's a heartbreaker, and uh, yeah. So you know, there's always a sign when, like I said, it worries me that I see Sega selling off a lot of significant yeah. assets in yeah. arcade. Um, to what what they're thinking arcade wise, what does that mean for their future? Um, you know, I, I, I was at Sega Software. We wanted the opportunity to put games on all these uh, other systems and could have done it way earlier and been way better at mm. it for the company and built the talent rather than them having to acquire a bunch of outside talent that does, builds games that are good and sometimes great, but don't really jive with any cohesive nature. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I really hope they just don't sell out and just do pachinko parlors. It's just, uh, it's, I, it's really because, because when when I went to um, Tokyo, but uh, oh god, six years ago, I visited a lot of those Sega arcades and yeah. played those games, and they were something. I mean, you know, there was a lot of rhythm games. There's some like crazy like arcade RPG stuff, and it was it was still an experience. It was still very Sega, still very in your face. And yeah, if they'd been that off, I just I don't know. That would yeah. be that would be the last I think of what. Yeah, I I, what Sega I really. Used to be. Yeah, I mean, obviously they they had a, a change in leadership uh, at uh, Sega over here, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know what that means. I you know uh, I'm guessing between that and the arcade stuff, something's up. Um, yeah. You know, I think they're going to focus on Sonic, obviously. Yeah. Uh, 
and everything else is, uh, you know, I don't think, I, I, I don't think you're ever going to see some hardware surprise other than some cool mm. retro thing. And I think mm. they're going to leave it for someone else to build. Um, they may participate in the design of it. Mm. I mean, I think they got the little Sega minis that play the games correct more than anybody else in yeah. their knockoff versions. Um, yes. That's, that, that that's games just, versions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. as much as I think you're going to see them. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I think we all just kind of waiting for a mini Saturn and a mini Dreamcast, and I, I think that'd I, be I about sure, it. I sure hope they're thinking about it, but I really, like I said, um, there's a lot of stuff going on there that um, mm, you yeah. can't can't read into it because I've looked at what the gaming press is saying about it, and they're just they kind of just give a collective shrug because they're mm. not. Inter I don't think they're interested in the story. Mm -hmm. And that bugs me, you know. Mm. Yeah, why aren't they? You know, used to, why is... used, to, used to be a brand that people were interested yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's really like it's yeah. Still respected. Yeah. Still, Sonic is is important. Uh, the arcade is still important, but where that future lies, I don't know. Mm. It's it's just a shame. It's just a shame where it's gone, really. Uh, because when when we look back now, because we're we're sort of um, we're like we're like pseudo -hist historians, really. <laughs> at arcade yeah. attack. And and a lot of the things that we dig up and. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna really like bring bring this up in a minute. Funny, funny peripherals, funny peripherals, funny yeah. Sega peripherals, <laughs> and also the innovation, the kind of the, the you know the, the ethos they had in trying to innovate and trying to do different things. So th these are a couple of things that, that that make Sega special for me. The Mega CD, right? Sega CD. I've loved owning one. I've loved owning one. I love going through the back catalog. It's just you know it's something else. Finding out about these weird peripherals. Thank, thanks, Adrian. Um, like the activator. <laughs> Another thing. Oh, the octopad. Yeah. The octopad. <laughs> the octopad. Oh, was that what? I, 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 that was I what laughed so did. hard. Yeah. Um, but the Sega Channel. So, right, things like the Sega Channel and oh, the, yeah. Yeah. the internet con uh, connectivity for the Dreamcast. So, this stuff was way ahead of where yeah. we were in, you know, our our homes and what we had access to. And you know what? You know that 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 kind of stuff is really interesting for me to for for me to for me to research so adrian i know you've researched a lot of sega stuff what have been the most interesting things that you've learned about sega like the last couple of years we've been doing this because that, that 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 for me in a nutshell has just been just just I've, i'd love to talk more about the sega channel in the future actually but yeah, yeah yeah well obviously talking to al nilson a few years ago uh he he speaks he spoke about some of the hedgehog and how he really was a big influence on that it was quite incredible um just also, Michael, just learning about the activator. <laughs> this is hilarious. Actually, I yeah. wanted to ask you, because I know you, you told me kind of um, in, in, in FB Messenger about your work on Sega VR, which never happened, or the, yeah. the, a VR machine for the Mega Drive, which, which probably deserves a bigger chat, but we could always yeah. do that in the future. We'd have, but... to, we'd have to get some of the people for you, um, because I came in relatively later into the process. Um, you know, I, Joe, you know, knowing... I had that firefighter mode side of me when mm. they're really kind of it started to go off the rails. He brought me in and also the fact that I was not colorblind. A lot of males are um, and I can't get motion sick. Mm. Um, I could uh, actually spend time in the rig. So uh. we, we were finding people who could tolerate it because the lag was, you know. Oh, bad. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you talk about VR sickness now. Oh, I it's, still get it now on like PSVR. I'm like, yeah, oh God. Yeah. Ab absolutely. So this was just not ready for prime time. Wow. I think I think Mac kind of alluded to that. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, yeah. they, they just recently found a game that, you know, um, I, I really have no recollection of. But when you do do the Sega um, VR, I'll tell you about um, my experience with a certain um, technology guy who was Mr. VR back in the day. I'm not uh, going to say his name. I'm going to hold nice. out. On it. But it, it, you probably know he's a famous dreadlocked uh, guy who was all about VR. And then now he spends his life being an anti-technologist. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, that was one of the weirdest experiences I have ever had. And I can tell you about it because it was all... He was consulting on Sega VR, and I got to go to his penthouse office um, and have a very surreal talk with this guy. And then seeing him years later talk about the evils of technology was unbelievable. So he, wow. he's 
quite quite the interesting character. So I'll be I'll be happy to fill you in on that side of the story, yes. and also some of the you know like. The challenges, like I said, the color blindness, the mm -hmm. time in the rig, the, the ability to withstand the motion sickness, um, that sort of stuff. That'd be yeah, because I want to do a I want to do a podcast on like nineties VR. Look at the Jaguar VR, the Sega VR. Maybe look at yeah, the VR. It, it kills me that Joe Miller's not here. That was his baby. Uh, I mean, yeah, he he good. literally was the producer of that project. So we're going to have to fill around the edges with some of the marketing people and yeah. some people like that that showed it off when we did show it off at uh, E3. Um, I don't know if Sarah will want to talk about it, but I'll I'll do my best to talk to her. And I think Dante also was there. Nice. And they're, mar they're married, um, and I I'm, I still have contact with both of them. Don't I'll see if they can at least tell you about what people thought and said about it. Appreciate cool. it, Michael. Yeah, gentlemen. Yeah. Um, thank you, Michael. Um, Rob, what have been the most sort of interesting things you've learned about Sega while doing Arcade Attack? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I think just maybe, I guess, get into the background of I wasn't aware of any of the executives beforehand or really how anything worked. And I think mm -hmm. that was kind of interesting to hear about. Like, um, I don't know. It's something else. I've, we've, you know, we've talked about this so often. I've got to ask. Uh, like Michael, can you conf did Michael Jackson do ah. the music for Sonic Three? Okay, how involved this is, was he? This is, this no, Rob just comes out with it. This is, yeah, this is <laughs> the I was most too scared to ask. <laughs> this is the most asked question. So there was a time I would have said no, um, based on what I knew. But since now, there is in there is just absolute proof that he did. So mm. the answer is yes. Wow. But if you asked me years ago. This was such a well-kept secret, and it was a very hard secret to keep, I can promise you. A so only a, a, a very tiny amount of people must have known this. Mm. And um, it never showed up, as far as I knew, where we got a build with the music in it. Um, oh. So I think what happened was they were stripping the builds of the music wow. and just putting in old tracks. And they wanted to keep it absolute secret. And they just, you know, even though I trust the test guys wouldn't have leaked that info, but I think they we would have picked up on after I've heard proof of a couple of the tracks, you kind of go, oh yeah, I, 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 this has to be. So the answer is yes. Cheers. Wow. Uh, and, uh, and Al, Al Nielsen's got to know about that. <laughs> and the fact, we won't and ask the fact, Al again. I think did we well, ask him last time? We did ask him. He gave me a very short answer, Michael. It, no, basically, well, he just says I can't talk about that I kind of. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, and I, I don't know. But since it's out there now, I don't know if Al can talk about it. He may never be able to talk about it because Al had a very close, unique relationship with Michael directly. So I, my guess is there's something involved in that direct relationship, right. um, and maybe it's just personal and it, we're, he'll leave it at that. I have some things like that, you know, that are stories that are, God, I would love to tell, uh, but they're just personal stories that, you know, I just respect and, and hold back to, you know, my interactions. Like I have a huge story that is kills me every time that I can't tell. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. That's we're trying right. to record enough, Mike. We can chat. <laughs> Yeah, we'll tell no, us no, I, 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 I can't, but he, he told me a couple of things about alternatives to how movies could have ended. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. But, but they're, they're locked in my head. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll secretly film you. I mean, I mean, not, not film <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I, I don't even, I don't even, uh, yeah, I don't tell anybody. I just keep them there. Nice. No, I'm sure they respect you for that as well. Um, Keith. What yes. have been the most interesting things you've learned about Sega since doing Finally that? having it confirmed that Michael Jackson did do the music. Oh, what? When was that? Yeah, that, was just yeah, that voice is canon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I, I'm only confirming what other people have confirmed. I know, I know. I want to be clear. <laughs> um, no, for, I mean, obviously, things like things like this, being able to speak to people like Michael, um, learning so much from Agent's interviews, the one with Al Nielsen was really reveal, revealing. Um, and just learning a lot more about these bits of plastic that we just used to play games on when we were kids you know they're just learning so much more about the development and what went into it and you know learning about people like Yu Suzuki and and just how these things came to be 
uh, for me that's been the most interesting part and also you know discovering games that i'd never played before that i missed out on the first time you know? can i just say something about al um my i think my favorite part of the blake harris book because i only appear twice in there once i'm in there for blast processing um and then i appear when al is leaving the company mm. and uh it, it al and i from the beginning because we were two big giant guys you know like mm. physical stature wise yeah. and also personality wise and so we would bump heads a lot because al would be you know in these time to time operation meetings mm. or uh, i'd be pulled into other meetings or mark you know marketing meetings that i got to go to because my mm. being an executive producer so a lot of times al and i would kind of go toe to toe and disagree and whatever but my favorite part is and and, and i love that al told the story is i came over to say goodbye to him and teared up over it because mm. it, to have Sega without Al there just felt, it was like the beginning yeah. of the end. I yeah. just felt like, okay, this is the beginning of the unravel, you yeah. know, because yeah. he's going to go and then we're going to start losing the other big ones. And when that happens, it, you know, we're the whole thing's going to start to unwind. And so, yeah, it was hard because he's a big character and he absolutely, um, I will defend uh, all the value that he, some people in their interviews may not have their view in history correct. They, they, they may have misinterpretation to their importance on a given project. Al 100% always has told the truth about everything that he brought. And mm -hmm. I think he deserves real credit for that because yeah. he could bend the truth far further than anybody and make himself an even bigger character because he deserves that. Absolutely. Thank no. you. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you all. Um, obviously, being here to chat things Sega for our almost 200th episode. Um, that's really all I wanted to ask everyone. I know, Adrian, did you have a few more things that you wanted to, to bring to the table before we sort of end the chat? Maybe one last question. And I just think talking about the demise of Sega a little bit, it's a bit of a sad ending, but you, you mentioned earlier, Michael, about Japan and USA J Sega not getting along. Do you think, you said they were working well with the Sonic game, for example, if they were on the right frame, you know, 99% of the time they're really working cohesively, much better than they used to. Do you think right now Sega would be the market leader? I or think, that... I don't know if they'd be the market leader, but they'd be in the top three. Um, mm. I, I don't know if they'd even be doing hardware. I just think they would be as important as um, Nintendo is in game making. Yeah. I think mm. it would have. I, I think it would have interestingly altered all our futures. That's for mm. sure. Yeah. Um, a lot of us would have been there. You know, I I could have been there for all I know for twenty years, and I would have had a very different life. Mm. Um, it, it, you know, it's it's yeah, it would have fundamentally changed and improved and made sure that company had um, endured um, mm. in a, in a much stronger way. But I don't know how you could have fixed it. It wasn't a choice on either yeah. side. It was a structural design issue in how, mm -hmm. how they laid out management, um, the communication abilities at the time. Remember, you know, we didn't have video. We couldn't yeah. see each other. Mm -hmm. We had to get on planes and it was costly. And, and, you know, and, you know, Shinobu and Joe, they had to stay to like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night to talk to them yeah. on the phone. Yeah. And you're just a voice on a phone. If you're lucky, you were on a speaker box. A lot of times you weren't, so they're passing a phone around. Yeah. I mean, this fundamentally does not allow you to, you know, I'll agree with one thing that Max said, which is, is you, you know, it was important to develop relationships with mm. each other. And yeah. that was really hard to do at, at a, a broad level. And had mm -hmm. we been able to do that, um, it would have, you know, because we did that with SOE. We just mm. had a fundamentally better relationship with SOE and it showed, mm -hmm. you know. We got along, yeah. respected each other. Yeah, I loved I loved going over there because I felt like I was at home. Yeah, you know, I, I just was in a different office with yeah. people with a slightly different accent, and you know, and they <laughs> considered they considered me one of their own anyway because we had you know I liked football and all the things. Yeah, in the UK. So, yeah, yeah, it's been a great chat. I've really enjoyed it, Michael. Oh, uh, thank you. 
this has been just so fun. Like I said, I feel like I'm back in the clubhouse and, mm -hmm. you know, Eric Wahlberg's here and Bill Person and all the old guys are around and Quakes coming down the hallway, you know, um, and yeah. Spider and all these guys, you know, all their nicknames. Um, the, <laughs> This is this is back to what we love to do. Just theorize about where the company's going, mm -hmm. where other companies were going. So thank you. It's been a great honor. No, no, thank you for joining us, Michael. We'll let the boys have a little bit of a, a final say about Sega before we before we wrap this up. So so Rob, final thoughts on Sega. Anything that you wanted to obviously mention before that, that you couldn't or anything you want to say about the company? Uh, not that much. I think we've pretty much gone over everything from like uh, my point of view. Just I guess, you know, it was huge. I guess for probably about two or three years of my life, and still got those really vivid memories. I think to me, for a large extent, when I think about the point in my life where I was most into gaming. Sega was right at the center of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Keith. Well, you guys know how much I love Sega. Again, I just the, 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 our, those memories. Is when we're talking about the, the the sad end for arcades and Sega recently shutting down their main arcades and things like that. Um, I'm sitting here thinking, well, we'll always have our memories, um, but, but they're so important to me. You know, they're so important to me. Um, and you know, Sonic and playing those games for the first time. Um, so, all right, yeah, I do happen to still be playing games now. But even if I'm not playing games in 10, 15, 20 years time, I'll always look back on that period. And that that one company and that one blue logo is the thing that I'll most associate with it. Mm. Um, and I think that's that's fantastic. And before he does go, I'd just like to thank Michael for joining us. Oh. Um, well, no, and also, you know, for listening as well. <laughs> listening to um, our ramblings. And yeah. also for any part that he played in those memories that I and we share from... Mm -hmm from the 90s as well wow, thank you thank you keith and like i said i'm i'm up for any time i'm you know i, I i'm more than happy to talk about non-sega stuff when you want to <laughs> let someone back into the yeah. clubhouse um yeah. you know i have opinions obviously about lots of things from you know uh, the modern gaming systems to PC gaming. I know you guys played around with. Would you ever discuss that sort of platform? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, the I'd be, I'd stuff. Love to get into oh, that. I mean, I, yeah, the yeah. Activision stuff, and I'd be so down to talk about like you know. I, I was at the beginning of the PC gaming stuff, so mm. I'd love to talk to you about like my point of view of watching that arc. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, I, yeah. Thank you, Keith, because yeah, I it, it, as much as you know, the Sega memories mean a lot to you. Obviously, it's a fundamental part of my life. You know, yeah. Are you have... surprised, actually, Michael? I think that last question for you, actually. What um, are, are you surprised that, that Sega still has an impact on people today? Like the old '90s Sega uh, still has this kind of impact on people? A little, like when uh, because of the reemergence of retro. When I see. Uh, uh, like a younger kid on DeviantArt will post a, a picture of an eternal champion that they drew. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I'm like, you, you know, you could be my grandson almost, um, yeah. you know, it, it, in a weird way uh, that it still has impact. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Or that the original Activision stuff days mm -hmm. that people still remember that stuff or, you know, even the British Telecom days that, you know, mm -hmm. British Telecom telecom had a gaming company and that they yeah. were incredibly relevant at one point and, mm -hmm. and it's stuff like star glider and, and carrier command and mm -hmm. you know um so yeah i'm amazed when people remember those like i i, I said weird dreams and adrian's like oh yeah totally i you <laughs> know uh, and i'm dreams. like you, yeah. you i love that be, game you've got to be kidding me that you guys would know weird dreams i mean yeah only because yeah. of Adrian, but yeah. Well, it's one of my, it's it's an iconic for me game for me. I just remember so many good memories. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. No, I, it's it 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 doesn't surprise me that Sega, the brand, is important. What surprises me is that people care about stuff that I created or my team created, uh, or just people like Ed and Enciata created. You know that that Echo is still mm -hmm. relevant and cared about, and other things mm -hmm. that he has done and. Um, yeah. In, in there, all over. A, Michael, there's a pub we went to. Do you remember there's a pub? I can't remember where it is, but they show the echo. There's a sign outside. It's in the Wall, Wallingford, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
I don't think oh, it's the dolphin. They stole they the actually... echo sign. We, we should tell Ed. Oh, it's, so the, you... it's the cover art from the game. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, yeah. You got to see if you can use Street View or something to get a snap of that thing because he would. He, he, yeah, yeah. He owns the IP, so he'll be paying. Ooh, a visit. Ooh, let's get him in trouble. <laughs> we're bad. We're, trouble. we're barred from that pub now, by the way. You know. <laughs> Do you know what I find the most bizarre thing about this whole kind of conversation almost is we're talking about the decline of Sega. And yet, if you go back to, say, the late 80s, Sega were huge and Activision, Activision were tiny. Now, Activision are huge and yeah, Sega Activision are just, yeah, tiny. Yeah, it, 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 you, you, there could be a future. It's just a matter of, uh, uh, of a leadership team mm -hmm. and, uh, and the dev team working hand in hand um, across now worldwide. If they mm -hmm. made that happen, you're right. They could come back because I remember, you know, packing my box of stuff and being escorted out of Activision uh, when they moved to L.A. And it was this tiny little team down there. And now they're one of the two biggest, you know, the biggest I player on the planet. Yeah. And you know, if you would have bet on that, I can tell you we wouldn't have bet on it. Uh, there you go. I mean, we, we, we knew we knew the dev team was going to do good, but we didn't know they were going to grow into, you know, that Bobby. We thought Bobby because he had, you know, he 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 was a it was a corporate takeover. And mm -hmm. so they were flipping companies. So I thought he was just going to flip it and then like 100 people would own it and just kind of, you know, what happens to a lot of brands that get drained and they go away. Brilliant. I mean, that's it. I mean, you know, Sega could rise from the ashes, Absolutely. can they? Can they? Yeah. I, but, I think um, that I think that blue logo and Sonic is is going to be the ultimate. You can gather. hear images. You know, like they said, there's this meme going around. <laughs> yeah. and you can actually you can't you can't usually hear pictures, but when you see that Sega logo, yeah, you totally can, can't you? Yeah, yeah. You the day we know it's over is when that no longer excites anyone. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd all be. <laughs> yeah, well, you're keep, you're keeping the flame alive. You know, that's 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 why I'm always glad to help you guys out and give any time I can because no, I, been, no, I I great having you know you. It, it, this flame is for everybody at Sega, not not <laughs> not just me being part of it. I I care about all the people that you know gave their a lot of lot of time and a yeah. lot lot of work. Yeah. No, thanks, gentlemen. No, thank you, Michael, for joining us from. My from pleasure. way beyond yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh listeners you know i really hope you've enjoyed that uh let us know what you think tweet us message us um here's to many more sega chats uh and yep for me and the boys uh we'll say good night good night night